This message comes from U.S. Bank. Expertise, encouragement, and support. That's what U.S. Bank is for. From incredible customer service to custom-fit personal loan options, U.S. Bank can help you achieve your goals. And the award-winning U.S. Bank mobile app puts your plan in your hand. Get started today at usbank.com. U.S. Bank, we'll get there together. Credit products are offered by U.S. Bank National Association and subject to normal credit approval. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Target has laundry day covered because they offer a great selection of concentrated Tide Pods to help with all your laundry needs. Tide Pods clean, freshen, and help rejuvenate your clothes with odor fighters and stain removers. Did you know Tide Pods clean better than the leading liquid bargain detergent? Tide Pods are powerful enough to make your whites white and your brights bright, even in cold water. Just toss in one Tide Pod for small loads, two for medium, three for large. It's that easy. For great value and convenient pickup options, get Tide Pods today at Target. This is Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boyd came to give them life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop his six feet if they kick it trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in. This on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rule. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit it, talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation You got to unleash the power of the pyramid this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Hey. Hey, folks. Welcome to One Nation Radio. I'm James Bonner. And me, I'm Rich Lotto. What's going on, man? Besides a lot of stuff, what's going on? Man, I'm chilling, man. Um, a, a lot to get to. Uh, long weekend is over with. Back to uh, the regularly scheduled programming. Big week for Bidden Doors this week. We will not be talking about it on this show because, of course, we have run into the New Japan scheduling. When you deal with New Japan, you take on their scheduling. So they're going to run it all the way down to the last week. Of course, there is like New Japan Road Tour still going on. There's still another Dynamite. So they're going to do all that. We will be back Friday. Uh, with a show looking at Forbidden Door, but we've got plenty to hold us over tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Um, I mean, even just even with the wrestling side, there's a lot. I mean, there's a there's a whole thing. You know, this is bigger than pro wrestling at this point. Um, but um, we're we're going to get to it. But, but where would you like to start? Vincent Kennedy McMahon, bring that ass here, and so I can open this pack. My God. Okay, so. Um, was it Wednesday? It was Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday, word came out that uh, there was an investigation brought by the uh, members of the board, WWE, into uh, words, allegations, rumors, and, and innuendo that Vince McMahon has a, has a uh, expensive settlement with a former... Employee in WWE, believe uh, she was some type of assistant, uh, and uh, the word is um, there was a quote consensual unquote um, relationship, sexual relationship with this man and um, this uh, this employee, um, and also involves around. Her salary of about a hundred thousand dollars being bumped up to two hundred thousand dollars, and um, she is apparently left the company. And uh, there was a non-disclosure agreement signed between Vince McMahon and um, the former employee, and there was a cash settlement along um, um, amongst the likes of like three million dollars. And as they have dug into this, they have found there are more. Non-disclosure agreements with former female employees um, in the company in the past, and they're digging through all of that stuff, and um, that in itself is a lot. 
Um, so where where would you where would you like to go from there, Vit? Uh, I almost called you Vince. My God, where would you like to go from there, Rich? Vince McMahon is paying for pussy. That that's that's pretty much like we took the long way there, and uh, I just want to go straight to it. Vince McMahon <laughs> is out here on his young fella. I'll pay for it. Those of you that frequent the Tampa Bay nights nightclub scene, uh, you know there's a song by by a gentleman. I believe his name was Young Fella, if I'm not mistaken. Right, yes, James? it was Young Fella. He did a song with Kendrick actually, and on the song he talked about throwing alley hoops. Now alley oops, alley hoops. You know what? I might as well just you know. <laughs> oh, fucking Tampa! Those of you on the Twitch stream. Oh man. You know, hey. Give, give me all some joke music right now on the stream. Oh man! Yeah. They ever tell you about the time I went to Miami and like we told them I paid we... for it. I <laughs> paid for it. I paid for it. Vince McMahon. Who yeah, knew? I ever tell you about the time that we went to Miami? Me and Ke- me and Alice and Kendrick and like we told them we were from Tam- we're Tampa Bay area and they were like, "Y'all ain't doing that joke shit, is you?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> they- they thought they thought we were some of them. We we were not. But no. But yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, not the young fellow. You know. Oh man. Um, Free tablet, but, yeah. I guess. <laughs> okay. Aside from the comedic point, um, with there, I want to talk about the serious point. Uh, Tanya, who has joined our show quite frequently, I think has been the single best person on Twitter that has been tweeting about this stuff. Where she was talking about, like, you know, the coercion and, like, this is rape, essentially, in a way. Um, the damn sure ain't consensual. It ain't, it damn sure ain't traditionally consensual. Like, yes, she agreed to this, but, like, maybe she doesn't agree with this if it's not the most, like, if it's not a fucking billionaire. Correct. If it's not her boss. Yeah. And, and it's like, it, it's a, it's absolutely disgusting. Like playing the the power dynamic, obviously right. from the employees, the the passing of back and forth between McMahon and John Laurinaitis, and uh, you know saying being passed like toys. You know these these boys are the tag team champions here. We thought the uh, famous uh, tag team wrestler in the Laurinaitis family was his brother in the Road Warriors. Apparently not. You know it is John Laurinaitis and Vince McMahon. Who knew? Like I, it. It made me Google up like the PJ Hairston, um, Eric Gordon story where like, you know, top receiver in NFL, NBA young player, they meet up somewhere and they just exchange car keys to their, you know, six digit uh, vehicles and they just drive off. It, it, it was like, that's what it made me think of, like vi- hearing this story about Missing Man and and Laurinaitis is like, yo, like, what is wrong with y'all? And it <sighs> makes you, th- like, the, the funny thing out of the fallout, people were shocked at, of learning about this, you know, this whole thing with Vince. They're like, isn't he married to Linda McMahon? I'm like, if you guys didn't wash Vince McMahon's balls so hard for doing that interview with Pat McAfee and the wrestling media, the the dopes that were tweeting along with it, uh, just say, oh, it just humanized Vince. It just, you know, all that you would have picked up in the interview. This man was talking about my wife at the time, and you might have been able to crack something open there but no you were falling to your knees and bowing at the altar of the mcmahon uh or vince mcmahon just like the idiots that did so on smackdown and on raw earlier this evening um this man like from there that's one part of the story obviously there's three million dollars nda's involved people think there's like you know there's great conspiracies out there right now nick khan's knocking people off stephan mcmahon has been reinserted uh as the interim ceo now uh that was the that came down like a couple days later vincent man still remains uh in control of creative so that shows you how much of a uh sham this entire thing is this is a play that they've run before um and you know, shout out to Stephanie. I guess, you know, all, all the, uh, you know, the time, you know, I, I guess I didn't get it right with the politics, but, um, you know, I guess the time with the family, she she had enough. Like, you know, either she was sick of them kids or, or Hunter or, you know, it was good enough for her. those those two weeks really refreshed her and, you know, uh, and gave her, you know, just another zest for life, you know, uh, and 
you know, they buried her on the way out uh, in the business journal or whatever the hell it was called. And ironically, she's back here in the puppet role. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows Vince is still in charge. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> um, I, I, should I just like do the whole thing where like I just pretend as if like we will we will handle this appropriately and like we will never see this man again after the, after the conclusion of this or am I just going to be like or should I just go straight to the cynical like nothing's going to change because you know this is a fucked up world should I just, should I just go straight to that I mean, is that like that? Is that how we normally do racism, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, Don't come to One Nation Radio looking for hope, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Like, I will. I am. I am not just gonna write this off as like it's not gonna happen that he gets moved out of the chair outside of him dying in the chair. But if this don't, <laughs> he's just gonna die in the chair. A lot of people have gone down for less. Um, yeah, th- this is flat out disgusting when you look at it from just about any angle. Like he should um, be gone. Any other place outside yeah. of fucking pro wrestling or, or the few other like slime slime places or whatever else or industries, he'd be out of there. He'd be gone, and you know, or he would have been gone by now, right? Like, like you don't survive like the massage parlor story from you know almost 15, 20 years ago. They um, then he had the nerve to. They they essentially sealed up the most disgusting promotional tactic um, oh, God, with yeah. with doing it you know adver- advertising him out of nowhere to show up on SmackDown and then I don't know that was just like one of the weirdest things I saw the Twitter clip because no way were they getting me to watch SmackDown under regular circumstances these circumstances or pretty much any other circumstances uh, I caught the clip. It was absolutely bizarre. It, it was he Vince looks like he's about to drop dead in the ring. He, lo- he looks old as dirt at this point. Uh, but uh, this guy shows up, talks about this then now forever stuff, and together the crowd's falling all over themselves to cheer this man. And it was just like this is Trumpian. Yep, yep, yep. Um, it's a cult, and <laughs> just like. I don't. I, there are so many things that are cultish, right? Um, just this one is another example of like that. Like you know, I'm a Florida State football fan. As that shit was going on in early uh, in like you know post championship, post national championship with like all of the James Winston stuff and people, you know FSU Twitter, if you will, like FSU Twitter was a cult. I'm, that, that was a cult. I'm not gonna pretend like like it wasn't just because I am a Florida State football fan. Like, but. That shit was disgraceful, um, and like we, I think it was Sam in uh, one of the threads, basically like the LLP ish type of thread that we have, and he was like, he asked like, how do you think the reaction is going to be? And I was like, oh, he's going to get cheered. They're probably going to do. They're probably and they're probably going to bow to him. And sure enough, they cheered and they bowed. And I was like, right. yeah, that's that's what I expect. They didn't they didn't show up to a WWE event to like care about how Vince McMahon you know treats or feels about women. And that's already been decided. Hell, like that's probably why they like WWE so much, because they hate the women. They might, uh, they might, you know, showcase some of them because they're really talented and they, you know, and some of them draw re- quarter ratings or whatever else. But like at the end of the day, like dollar. it's still the same place that like had, you know, they had Linda McMahon sitting in a fucking wheelchair in a coma as like he's having as she's running around as, as Vince is running around on her in storyline. Yeah, man. Um, Trish, Trish Stratus barking like a dog. You know, they 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 put out um, the the woman's like information on, on social media and all that, and Who, it's I, uh, somebody did that that uh, that is of some note that act, uh, yet effectively you know did yeah. that. Who was it? Do you remember? Shepard. The fuck is wrong with him? Everything, but um. Yeah, this is um it makes you look at Vince and it's like obviously I, I feel like people are are doing a little bit of deflecting when they say, Why are you surprised by this? Like, oh yeah, that's a you know, it's like it's like a whole thing like that, but I'm like, yo, why can't we just talk about this? Like like fuck the surprise that that's about it. It's like 
this is disgusting. Like, it, it is horrible, bro. Like, this is just the highest level of just like, I, I can't, I can't, I don't, I don't even know what to say. It's like just, you, you know, I think you were talking about how, um, after Ember Moon talked about how Laurenitis was, um, or not Laurenitis, but basically like people were more or less like telling the NXT 2.0 women how to dress, uh, without saying it, dress more, uh, provocatively. Um, and you were saying like, yeah, like the corporate mandate is sexy. This makes it all less sexy. And like, I gotta say, like all the talk about the alpha male stuff that this man is, that has done for in you know, built himself on for the past, you know, 40 years almost, um, including, you know, the Mr. Man stuff, like the genetic jackhammer shit is like, bro, you pay for all that? Really? That's really okay. Mark, like <laughs> John, a literal John, little John's John Laurinaitis and wow, Vincent John McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that man's name is Kennedy, so will we know John, John Kennedy? Kennedy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <sighs> yeah, uh, absolutely disgusting. I hope Vince like gets thrown out. It probably won't happen, but um, yeah chaos around world wrestling entertainment who knew yeah like um I, I know i know people have been petty over the last couple of weeks but like fuck it like i love her so it doesn't really matter one way or the other but like becky lynch who this is the yeah, place you bring know it back to more the or light. less like this is the place you want to be for women's wrestling and all that kind of stuff and it's like okay so where do you turn to now like Sasha and Naomi said, "Hey man, hold these belts. We we've getting the fuck out of here." Um, like I, they got Becky out here doing the twenty four seven chase thing with Dana Brooke a couple weeks ago, um, and she looks ridiculous. Rhea Rhea is apparently missing her match with Bianca, so in place they put Carmella, who like eleven months ago they put her out there at SummerSlam. To, uh, as a come down between like telling you that the Sasha Banks Bianca two match has been pulled, but we're going to give you Becky Lynch a surprise to get you to go down and come up the roller coaster. Uh, and now like it's it's in real life, and you're really going to get Carmella. Um, like these women's titles that that Sasha and Naomi um, put on that table, they're going to stay on that fucking table apparently because I don't I never heard anything about a. You know, to be determined how they're going to be, you know, put back into use for all. They're, they're effectively defunct. We may never see them in shits again, and it's a shame because like those are some of the best looking belts they've ever had. Um, Ronda Rousey is out here getting ethered by Nate by Natalia of all people. After after Ronda Indeed. Rousey after Ronda Rousey pointed out, "Hey, you and your sister's thing is creepy. You're doing an incest gimmick," and and then she still she still lost. That should be impossible. Yeah, it should be, and that's and you know, it is Italian who's not some great promo. This is this is purely Twitter fingers. So like, hey, um, you know, like it's been a good run, <laughs> but <laughs> it's time to start talking about women's wrestling in WWE and yeah. where they're going wrong and failing and dropping the ball. And we can start with Sasha Banks. <sighs> Man, Sasha Banks. May or may not have been released, depending on who you ask. Maybe she was released weeks ago. Let some tell it. Um, <laughs> if this is the case, um, I would like everyone to get on tw- that, that's getting on Twitter and talking about, yeah, she's going to Hollywood to stop working yourselves into delusion. You know, <laughs> this is this is setting up to be as bad as John Moxley is going to retire. You know. <laughs> This is setting up to to be as bad as John Moxley is going to leave the business for three years and then come back to to WWE. Stop this. You know where she's going. I know you don't like it. Look at me in my eyes. (laughs) Deal with it. She's going. Yeah, my personal favorite one was I would like to see her. I would like to see her in Japan. And I kept seeing it over and over. And keep in mind, like I heard, I got to this news later than than y'all did as it was all coming, or as it, the the story. Who like the person who broke it was Ra, was it Roger Geary, His name, 
Yeah. Like, Raj Geary, a personal person, I think is an asshole. Like, when he's, you know, <laughs> on camera said that, like, what was it? She is only getting the only getting pushed as a AEW Women's World t- Champion because she's dating Kenny Omega, which one I don't think was even true at the time. Uh, yeah. At the time, and and also like, let's put Sheeta's resume in the uh, you know at that time in that particular year against any of the women in the world in America or not in the world, but in North America, and like she would have been in the top five easily. So to say, to try to dismiss her as you know whatever else was bullshit. Uh, are being meritless. It's just a you know political push, whatever. Uh, so the the the, the sweet part is like either he's is either Sasha is actually gone, which she you know she has tried to get she got tried to get in two thousand nineteen, or B this fucker put off set off this motion and he's gonna be wrong as fuck and there'll be no reason to actually listen to him ever again. So I'm good either Man. way. I'm good with either one. Man. Good with either one. Um, I mean, is that a pack being opened right there on that one? <laughs> but, I don't know. Um, you know, he's anti yeah. AEW, so like he'll still have an existence. But like people that are you know, that are keen to think, think, seeing that he's full of shit will also be like, oh, okay. So not only are you also full of shit, you're also wrong, right? Right. So, um, but anyway, yeah. Um, I saw the, the I saw the I saw tons of the. I would like to see her in Japan, including from uh, uh, Buddy from Forbes. That always, that that always. Uh, what's his name? I can't remember his uh, name. This is nasty. Uh, Alfred, I believe. Is yes, his name. Alfred. I think yes. it's Alfred. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The Fashion Nationals, Mark. Yeah, Fashion uh, Nationals. Cheese board guy. The oh geek. yeah, that's right. That's right. He yeah. um, he said she he would like to see her in Japan. I'm like, where in Japan? Japan no promotion I ever heard of. <laughs> So it's like, oh, what you're saying is like anywhere but AEW is really what you're saying. Cut the bullshit. Like, because I, like if she does end up in AEW with the addition of like a Ember Moon to go to go with the addition of like Kara Hogan to go to go with the team of uh, Stokely or whatever else and the baddies. Uh, and also a team like Swerve in Our Glory to go with the TNT Gotta champion. Gotta say, man. To go with the TNT champion, uh, Scorpio Sky. Like, it would make you, and, and also, you know, someone like Ricky Starks and Power of Sons would make you like an asshole for, for starting off this thing when you knew that, or when most, you know, people would be like, hey, like, their AEW is basically like the best of the American indies, if you will, in a lot of the best black wrestlers in the American indies we're all signed to WWE, and as they will get released out of the company or leave the company, they will naturally gravitate and end up in AEW because it's another place to go now. And then a lot of the stuff that you were hearing about diversity, which wasn't really about diversity, it was about black people, which people weren't just fully saying it with their chest, will then look fucking stupid. So I will, I don't want her after I've after I've talked as much cash shit and foolishness. And fuckery that I don't want her to go to AEW because then it will make me look like a schmuck in the long run, which was inevitable. But I'm trying to get my my grip going on as long as I possibly can. So James, it I, sounds like you're saying the game has been switched on some ludicrous shit. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So I want her to go to Japan, but never saying where Japan. Like you know, and like it was funny because I was waiting after We're wrestling I, wave. Let's go after Let after I put up my tweet. It was funny because I was waiting for a hit dog to holler. It never came. To, it never came up. It was a lot of likes. It was, it was one was universally liked. Go figure. But I was waiting for someone to copy in and be like, "Well, what? Say a place like X, Y, and Z." And be like, "Bro, I just did a three hour fucking podcast on Joshi a couple weeks ago. Don't act like don't don't try to play me like I know what the fuck I'm talking about." So, but it didn't happen. No one fell into the booby trap. But I was setting the trap to see how dude would react. But no one. But no one. No one took the bait. I, I, no one. T- no, no one was. No one stepped on that particular landmine. So good for them. Kudos because they just finna get arm in the rim. This car, this car to style yes. with that one. Oh man. Yes. But uh, yeah. So, uh, but anyway, it's like yeah. So you don't want them. You want them to go to Japan, which could mean any fucking thing, especially in this era of uh, which like, means they, they, they don't know shit go, what's going on Look. because like if they say if they suggested they wanted someone to go to Japan, a woman wrestler to go to Japan. In this era, in this climate right now, there's only two places really to go worth speaking of, right? Like, no, 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 knock to any other Joshi promotions, like, like Seedling, like Ice Ribbon, like Sendai Girls, like, uh, 
a bunch of different places. Like you mentioned, pro, pro wrestling wave. But all these places now are pretty much like almost like produce feds. Like they they only have a handful of people, and everybody else outsources to freelancers. Whether it's like prominent, your shit might like not colors, even make whatever. tape. He's trying to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, Diana, Diana wasn't making tape at all for a long time. But yeah, that's my point. So like when you say you want to do, you want to see her do X, Y, Z. Like if you want to see you do X, Y, and Z, like how are you gonna get a hold of it? I know right. I'm gonna get a hold of it. How are you gonna get a hold of it? <laughs> Yo, the stands. Um, I think we gotta talk about them too. Like, um, I just, I just wait. Like, it's hilarious because a lot of them are they're, they're writing these obituaries and acting like she's dying and like her career is over and all this stuff. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's gonna be so like they're gonna be so hurt. They're gonna be so hurt. It's gonna be it's gonna be incredible. Quite quite frankly, to see the uh, the amount of back walking that's gonna go on and um. I, I just welcome it. I welcome it. Um, yeah. So, go ahead, sorry. Sasha as a as a person, you know, I always thought uh, Sasha would be like I've always for a long time said there's like spot for you know one of the super like women that was on WWE would mm-hmm. eventually leave and go mm-hmm. to AEW. I always predicted it would be Sasha. At times, it looked like it was going to be Charlotte because there was some shit going on with her. It, it yeah. seemed and, like, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Like uh, you first predicted this around the time Sasha left after WrestleMania 35, um, that it was going to be somebody. And the only two times it ever looked like it was going to be somebody out of here it was going to be Sasha, and then um, Charlotte, as Charlotte was like, f- literally like accidentally on purpose fucking stuff up on television at WWE. Mm. Try like. If she, if she, if there were no AEW, they, I feel like they probably would have thought of seriously releasing her after that bullshit. But you know, whatever. Like they were end up working, get into it, they end up uh, working, get into a work shoot, and then they went from there. Another good one. They were saying that AEW couldn't afford Sasha, which is like absolutely what? ridiculous on every way you look at it. I right? never heard that one, but I would have like, oh, I, yeah, I, I would have loved to have tweeted that that one had I seen it because that yes. is ridiculous. But but they want to see her go to Japan. You know, but you know, um, but they can't. Yeah, they want to see her to go to Japan, but they can't. But AEW can't afford her. What do you think she would be making in Japan? Do you think it would be a comparable? Do you think? Do you think Rossi is is paying her as much as as much as Tony Khan would pay her? Because I I would say no, the fucking no fucking way, no fucking way. Um, and she would be working on commission just like everyone else does there. Like Sasha. We know the the career that she's had while having a, an eighth of the push mm-hmm. that someone like Charlotte or Becky has had. People will will talk all day about you know how her main event in WrestleMania. She won X amount of titles. She was a tag team champion. Blah blah. blah. Sasha told you what she thought of those belts uh, when she laid them shits on the desk. <laughs> like like oh y'all like these don't mean shit. <laughs> Like, because she's always the one that's tried to make them mean something. Yep. And all they've done is fuck this woman around yep. uh, with these belts, whether it was with the Australians uh, <laughs> or whether it was going to be what was about to happen to her there. We know, like, we've talked about Sasha Banks for years on this show. This is the greatest uh, women's wrestler that this country has ever produced. Yep. And I don't think it's particularly close, personally. Um, they, <laughs> they, they didn't get it. the The crowd wanted Sasha. They always picked Charlotte, and for large parts of her career, Sasha Banks. I want y'all to to to, to pay attention real quick. Clip this. Send it to whoever you want to send it. Sasha Banks' WWE career was her. It consisted of her putting over lesser white women, and I don't care whose feelings that hurts. It's the truth. How many times did she have to lose to Alexa Bliss? How many clean jobs did she have to do to Charlotte Flair to get Charlotte and make sure Charlotte was over? Becky Lynch. She benefited off of Sasha Banks. Fresh fresh return run. How many other how many others can can, can we talk about? Weird? I mean, you just mentioned the iconic, so I mean that's right. Oh there. yeah. Yeah. Sasha right. winning a match finally at WrestleMania after all these years this year. Literally the reverse Undertaker for a lot of other times. 
And I talked about when we were talking about the women's division in AEW about what the women's championship actually means in correlation to a particular product. Like, it's not like the men's championship where you can be somewhere else on the card, right? And then, you know, whatever. If you're not the champion, that means and you're not in the rotation, that means you're probably on the sideline. Uh, we, we know all the stop-start stuff they did with her and Bailey, only to pull it out when there was no fucking crowd there, when there was uh, the Thunderdome, the PC. We saw how Bailey was welcomed back. Um, she she got... Pr- she she uh, promptly got to miss WrestleMania as a healthy scratch and get sunned by the Bella Twins. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Immediately, like you know, with Sasha, they it never is like she's healthy right wins. now, and they just they don't have anything for her right now. They, they never really Last gave Sasha checked. the big wins. Sasha's always been the the person that's actually popped quarter hours, yep. has actually had a strong fan base, has actually done a lot of these things that people convinced themselves that Charlotte did. And right. I and I don't want to take Charlotte down in this, but like I feel like those two, this is Triple H and The Rock right here that we're talking about, and it's like. There was somebody that was doing all these jobs to make someone else look good. And the other person didn't need it because they were, quote unquote, bulletproof like that. That's what was going on with Sasha Banks. Yep. And <laughs> we remember WrestleMania 32. She comes out there with Snoop Dogg. We remember NXT. It was Sasha from day one till now. And they're going to feel it. They are going to feel it uh, with the departure of her fan base, who is who would ride for not only Sasha, but that company, like their lives depended on it. Um, You know what? It reminds me a lot of like Lakers fans and Kobe Bryant fans. Like we're going to see where their allegiance really lies. uh, If and when this all officially comes out that she's gone from the company or ends up somewhere else. And like, I think we're going to see a a great divide. Like the way that LeBron becoming a Laker, like let people kind of see where where people really lie. Ultimately, like her with AEW, we're we're really going to see like where you really where people you know allegiances really lie with this. It's going to be interesting to see how this how this all shakes out. It really is. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, you like me mentioning that Kobe, huh, Kobe fan? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Y'all know what it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Look, y'all know what it is. You know, I, I think, I think the team should be, uh, you know, they, they should have to outsource uh, itself. But whatever, you know, we, you know, the, the team is being rented out right now to clutch. Yeah. You know, yeah. eventually that'll be that'll be done. It would be back to business. One, so. one would think. One would think. Um, you know, but then again, like mom and pop shop that doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, like. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, we'll get the NBA talk in a second. But uh, yeah, I just, uh, I, you know, the word was that like, you know, there was also some like little talk that like Sasha had her lawyers, had lawyers or, or something like try to, you know, seek out her release. So like, that's interesting to see how that goes because it's like, we're talking about someone that's made, that's made enough money to have their own lawyers in, in the, in the wrestling biz. And also, you know, I know, uh, Lance also ran about, um, saying that like, she doesn't have the option that people think she, she does. And while that is true, um, I would like to point out that like, we had, to, we were ver- about the Hollywood, you know, try it, try your, uh, Hollywood career. Like we, a lot of people in, you know, WWE especially had the same doubts about the rock and Batista, especially, uh, Batista, like, you can talk about The Rock with the whole situation where, like, they didn't want to, they let his contract lapse so that, like, he could go to fail in Hollywood and then they could have, you know, um, leverage, uh, if and when he came back and then that, you know, <laughs> I'll see you in a few years. <laughs> uh, and then Batista, they didn't want to help, even help him promote, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which turned into, like, you know, one of the most successful, uh, movie franchises, uh, of our lifetime. So, like, if you were to if you were to ask me like from what I knew of Batista then and what I know of Sasha Banks now and like her um her potential to land some scenes and some roles in Hollywood if she meets the right people compared to Batista at the time, I, my money would be on Sasha in front of Batista. But that doesn't mean that you know it's in the bag. But like you know, I just think that um just dismissing it outright or like getting or trying to like get in front to try to dunk on the Sasha fans like or stands, if you will, like, 
I don't know, bro. I would have left that one in the chamber because, like, I think that one can blow up in your face. Uh, but you know, you know, Lanza, Lanza wants to jump out there and be 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 out on that one. So good for him. Like, ultimately, like, this is a woman that wants to wrestle, right. regardless of how <laughs> regardless of how successful she wants to she wants to take the Hollywood thing. I think she'll always come back to wrestling, especially given her age right now. So like, there's still time to do that. And I know like the window is shorter for for women in. in L- or I mean, I'm um, entertainment, blah 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 blah, uh, unfairly, but I still think that like she still just wants to wrestle somewhere, somewhere meaning like not WWE, which leads you towards the direction of AEW, and that's why people have talked about like the hope she goes to Hollywood, I hope she goes to fucking Japan. So yeah, that's what they say, that's what it all takes it back to It's like oh, so any any it, like they like you can leave us, but don't go over there. Don't you dare do it. Don't you dare do it. Well, yeah. I, I wonder what they disown her. You know, what they, what they like, like what's the, see. we gonna see. Cause I, what's the play here? Cause, cause look, when she, if she come out here and she still has blue hair, I don't see why you can't just be a part of the, of the Mercedes, of the Mercedes mob. I don't, I don't get it. The you Sasha know, they, crew, can, they can't just transition right over to the, to the Mercedes. No. It's, it was yeah, that, that, I, I, I bet they, they, they real they if, real if picky no, about that name. I bet Rich, if you don't have if you don't have like a title belt in your Abby, you ain't even got to change the picture. You ain't even got to change your avatar. <laughs> Am I you wrong know, here? Don't, don't worry, James. They they gonna replace her with Nikita Lyons. You know that, that's 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 their plan, the master plan. Um. I don't even. Is this something that they? they is this something you've seen, or is this something you're yes. joking about? I'm sorry. What? So, uh, like, the thinking with WWE is like they can just replace her with someone else or whatever. And you know, look at looking at how they book. They're probably right in, in in a sad, sad way because obviously they wouldn't know like what to do with a Sasha Banks. <laughs> so the the actual impact of what she's what she will produce will probably end up less than what it should be. So in the- theory, maybe you can replace her. You can't replace. Look, man. That, uh, what song was it? One of the. It was David Dennis actually. He's put his post on Twitter. He posted a picture of Sasha Banks. I had no idea that this replacement thing was even. I thought it was just a joke. But David Dennis had posted a picture of Sasha, and then under it, it was like, "Okay, then make another hove." Like, yeah. just you know. So, uh, what Kingdom Come song was that from? It was on Lost Ones. That's right, because Dre made that beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember the name of the song. It's like Lost Ones. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Like, We're going to talk about thing. rapping a little bit. Jay-Z and Dr. Dre should be banned from working together. I, 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 after Kingdom Come, yeah. Yeah, like the commission stuff in theory sounded a lot sweeter than in, in, in 2006 happened. We were like, oh, no, no, no. But, um, yeah, just the Nikita Lighting thing is like. Ain't it depressing? I, look, man, I've never seen her wrestle. Um, but like, I don't, outside of, I get, <clears throat> I, outside of, I guess like black men that hate black women. Like, I don't know. I don't know who is supposed to just gravitate from the Sasha like fandom into the, 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 the lion's verse. Like, I don't, I don't know who that's supposed to appeal to the lion, the lion's roar people the the that's what wait, 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 that's what they're called the line are, are these serious names or are you just joking i'm, I'm just making these oh up. okay i'm about to say the boy, they already got a name for that shit you know? boy the lionesses yeah um but countdown's on um so i you know countdown's on uh how, how, <laughs> we'll, we'll see it. We'll see you soon, Sasha or Mercedes, whatever the hell you're going to go by. <clears throat> um, let's see. Um, so what's next, man? Steph Curry. Okay. Speaking of people opening up packs and cigars, victory cigars and, and everything else. We hadn't talked about the NBA finals. It kind of just the schedule worked out weird this year where we couldn't get a preview done and all that. But I did pick Warriors and Six, everybody, and that ended up happening. Uh, Steph Curry 
and the wins the finals MVP. Warriors win in six. Uh, yeah, man, this was a uh, this is a, a very like fun kind of series to watch. Um, there was like I didn't necessarily think there was a uh, like there, like I don't know. It was hard because it like game one was like the Celtics just like lost their fucking mind in the fourth quarter. And I was like, well, if they don't lose their fucking mind. I clearly saw who the better team was throughout most of this game. And then I felt like that played out over most of the series pretty much. Um, and then Steph just went all time in game four and throughout this series, pretty much this is a excellent, excellent series. Uh, of course, he gets his first finals MVP should have be a second one, but yep. whatever. Um, this guy, like, he's my favorite player in the league. I think he's like, just he changed the way the game is played. Calling him the greatest shooter ever is an understatement yeah. to his greatness. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I feel like that's that's like the next category. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, he's the greatest shooter ever. Like, <laughs> like that's the other part of what he's doing. But um, just to see the dirt that was thrown on him, uh, and and his team. Over the last couple of years, the the amount of like inner workings in the media, I felt like that was out to undermine them and break their team up with the Kevin Durant departure and all that other stuff. He they made a lot of people look dumb, and it was like I I don't know what there wasn't to like the, like people talk about Hakeem Olajuwon and the Rockets and the Heart of a Champion stuff. I saw all that Heart of a Champion stuff uh, from the Warriors uh, the, in this series. All of it, from Draymond to Clay to Steph to <laughs> like just Andre Iguodala, like coaching up you know people from the sidelines, being the real UD, but <laughs> you know actually contributing to winning. Uh, you know Steve Kerr, I-, I think just you know adding another one for, for for his resume. This is his ninth NBA title, James. Yep. Um. This guy, like this, I, I think this is a special team, special group of players uh, holding off. You know, like it wasn't the Celtics time. Uh, Wiggins had Tatum in jail tonight <laughs> <laughs> in game six. <laughs> um, I felt like uh, Jalen Brown was the better Celtic of the, of the two forwards um, in, in this series. And I, I would not have predicted that going into this. Even why um, not being able to dribble, huh? Correct. Like, apparently, like, that man decided he's Clyde Drexler, you know, apparently. So, <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, I don't I don't think it was a Celtics time. Like, no shame to them. It was just like, nah, y'all ain't there yet. Um, like, y'all ain't, y'all ain't dogs in the way that these dudes was dogs. And it was funny because, like, the whole thing was like, yeah, the, the Warriors were gonna, was going to get locked up, locked up by the Celtics. But, like. This, the Warriors were doing the locking up. Marcus Smart, your defensive player of the year. We need to keep that award at Steph's house now. <sighs> like, there's no way they can win with Marcus Smart as their point guard. I, I've seen enough. Well, I mean, like, we already I, – I mean, that's kind of the reason why, like, I didn't watch the finals this year. It was like I, – I feel like it was going seven. I don't know who's going to win. But I felt like either way, <clears throat> I was going to get a bowl and shoot ugly series. So I wasn't really interested. Like – I was just like, and I felt like personally watching it. I mean, it kind of, I was wrong when it going seven, but I was like, overall, generally speaking, it was like, Steph is so much better than everybody else on the floor. Um, but I think like his teammates are, might, might cost him this series. Um, luckily, uh, Andrew Wiggins showed up, um, in, in spurts, like when it finally came down to it in the last, it, it took six games, but Draymond Green finally contributed something. Um, and Clay had a couple games that were really good. Like and, and like, ultimately for me, uh, going through listening to people talk about this series, and hearing about like, and then seeing some of these box scores and seeing like, it seemed like in in one quarter of each half, one team would just basically like just completely just short circuit offensively and mm-hmm. score like four or eleven points in a quarter. Both teams, and it really came down ultimately to is one team has Steph Curry, the other team does not, and that team is going to lose because they do not have Steph Curry. Uh, so like I can't really because I didn't watch it, I cannot get into uh, the um, the nuts and bolts of the series. But what I will say is 
Steph Curry is who I thought he's been pretty much since 2013. Um, like, I think that in this particular era, there are three generational people, the way people talk about Magic and, and Bird. Uh, like, the way that people, or well, if you want to say the entire 80s, you say Magic, Michael, and Bird. Like, I think there is LeBron or Durant and a uh, Steph Curry, and those are the three. And, like, there you go. Um, so, like, when it comes to the Celtics, as far as the future, I'm not as, I'm not as, like, uh, optimistic about their future as others are. Like, I understand that Tatum is 24, um, Brown is 25. We're going to see if they want to stay in Boston. There's that, and also, like, I just don't think, the when people were ready to anoint Jason Tatum after sweeping the Nets, I, I was hesitant and, uh, you know, I kind of am hesitant with anybody that gets that kind of, that kind of, uh, um, label. Like I, I remember it took me until 2017 to finally be like, okay, I get what people are saying about the Kawhi thing before. I was just like, he fucking drifts and floats through games. And some, and sometimes you realize he's out there aside from defense. And then like, you know, he would, uh, I think it was Memphis series when he was basically like scoring 40 in, uh, 2017, in, in certain games and playoffs, it was like, oh, okay, like, now I see why people, you know, talk about him this way, or or maybe he's, or actually, I think he's finally arrived to the height that, that people give him, like, I understand he won a finals MVP, but, like, it wasn't like he just fucking, you know, blew people away in that way, but, like, once he's scoring 40 on the Grizzlies, and he's basically, like, looking like second 3 P Jordan, like, move per move, I'm like, okay, I get it now. Um, and then obviously, you know, a couple years later, 2019, he had that fantastic run. But by that point, tomorrow's I had already finally saw what people were else were seeing. But I didn't, because I hadn't fucking seen it in that way. Um, but when it came to Steph, it was always like, he always, or because of the shooting, he's always going to have a clunk, or he seemingly is always going to have one or two clunkers in a series. But once you look at the averages, it evens out to about 26, five and five. And that's what he's always been in the playoffs. So it's like when people um, want to give him shit for blowing the uh, the o- or the sixteen finals, it's like go go back and look at his numbers. Like he played well. Like I understand like people uh, get on him because like people feel like it's an excuse that we saw his fucking knee buckle or whatever else. But and then he scored thirty eight in game four. But it's like he, the dude won hundred percent. We can't pretend like we didn't see that dude's fucking knee buckle. <laughs> um, so, so like for me is like, I don't, I, he, you know, I've always liked them. I think that, uh, if I, if I, I'm not going to pretend like I, I think he's better than LeBron or Kevin Durant, like at the peak of their powers. Or like when I say I got to have it, I need to see what you can do at the peak of what you can do. Like he ain't got no 51 point finals game. He doesn't have a, what, 47, 17, nine playoff game, but like outside of like the, the insane all time stuff, he's like his like his he can top out and he he does have certain moments like give you thirty three in a in a game seven in the second half. His, he absolutely his game, has stuff his, like that. His game four in this series is definitely forty three. The all time pantheon right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. performance. Yeah, I, but I, I don't want to say but. Uh, but uh, I want to I want to say but then I say but. I guess where I'm getting at is. I think that Steph Curry's brilliance is in mesmerizing you or just giving, throwing the hammer, dropping the hammer on you for like a quarter or a half, not necessarily like managing an entire game. More times than not, his, his greatness is that as opposed to give, dropping the hammer down to you for a whole entire game, controlling every single thing because physically he's not a Jordan, LeBron, Durant, impo- or person just like, has these dimensions that are impossible to guard or has his athleticism that's impossible. Like, he is, his impossible stuff is the shooting and sometimes you can mess with him and sometimes because he's shooting from such a great distance, there's variance in how uh, he can dominate, but the domination is there, but it's in spurts as opposed to it can just be an entire game. And the 43 and then them, and, and but then like the, the 43 and then game five, was it game five? Yeah, game five were like, four. They're, no, no, game four was the 43. Game five oh, yeah. is when they basically said, we're just going to phase guard him and we're okay. Phase guard him. We're, we're okay with playing half court offense four and four. We're taking him out the game, which is like, I'm sorry, but that's a, that's a testament to his dominance that they're like, 
we are okay with giving NBA players four on four offensive space. That is absurd. Game changing, like literally game changing. Yeah, like, that is dominant. What I, make, dominant without having to touch the ball because they won't let you touch the ball. It's talking about making your teammates better. Like that's exactly. <laughs> there's no better example than we'd rather play four on four uh, defense in the half court than let this other fucking guy touch the ball. That's exactly what that is. Bro, by the time game six came, like the Celtics were just like, well, fuck it. Like, just do what you want. Like, it, like they, they was like, they beat them and they beat them and they beat them. And then it was round 50 or round, like round 12. And it was just like, we ain't got it no more, man. Just, just knock me out. Like, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. Um, so legend. As, so as far as Steph, uh, I think before the game, even then I called you, I was like, I, you know, I got the resume up. I do the thing when there's a an all time final or all time NBA player, you know, wins the finals. I basically like go over the resume and then like try to figure out where they are at this point in their, you know, that you know the the year is over. And um, for me, I've always had or not always, but for a while, a few years, I've had basically Steph and Durant basically like in the same realm with each other within one or two people. Um, uh, so for me, um, last year when Durant was going fucking insane, having like some of the, you know, best out or playoff performances of all time, um, but ultimately losing to seven, I had Durant in front of him. Um, they were on the same team together. Well, one, Durant was better for longer and two, they were teammates on the same team and like, they were kind of like a one, a one B you could flip at a time, but like when shit hit the fan, the person that was uh, proved to be the person to get them out of the jams were Durant more times than not. So, um, like, just seeing that all together, I had him in front. But, now that it's 4-2, to two, I'm not finna argue. Um, I still think Durant's better, but I'm not. About, as far as the resume, I'm not about to argue about the resume. Um, so, as far as the resume with the 4-2 to two thing right now, um, I think Durant and I think, a head-to-head win. Uh, yeah. Even though Durant, aside outside of Game Six, played better, yeah. But yeah, sure. Uh, so, um, what was I going to say? Yeah. So, like, so for me, it was like, all right, like, because Durant and and Curry, given their ages, are going to kind of jump, you know, outside of that, like it, you know top in the fringe of the top 15 range into now getting into the, the quote unquote Bill Simmons pantheon. Um, and for me, it was like, all right, so I'm just like, I think Steph is ahead now to put him into getting out of the, the end of it and put him towards the, the, you know, the, the back half of it, like, you know, the 10, 12 or whatever. And like that then turned into like, all right. So like, and for, for, for me personally, like I'm including guys from the '60s. I'm sorry. Like I, I'm not doing the this person cannot play in this league. I'm going by like your resume and dominance in the era you played in. That's what I'm going by. So when people like see that I have like Bill Bill Russell or Bill Chamberlain or Jerry West or Oscar Robinson, I'm gonna be like tough shit. These were these were the guys that were making all the first team all NBAs. These are the guys that are making MVPs. You're not going to tell me their MVPs don't matter don't matter as much as like LeBron's MVPs. I'm sorry, I'm not doing that with y'all. I'm not doing it. So, um, when so for me like I had to do, do tiebreaker because like I've always had like the Shaq and Hakeem thing, um, you know, neck and neck, and like there's arguments for both, and like you can say that you know the floor, like the ceiling is way higher on Shaq, and then like the floor was higher on Elijah Wan because Elijah Wan would get swept, and also like there's also a lot of people. I I feel maybe I'm just my bias from like growing up here in Central Florida at the time. It was feel like people hold it against Shaq because Shaq was that big and strong. You don't account for like, hey, they just basically let people just fucking haul off and flake and foul him on every single play, and we just were okay with it because we had no way to, 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 to deal with how to guard him. We were okay with it, and like people don't ever account out in the math of like uh, Shaq was always hurt, Shaq got swept, Shaq didn't try hard. If you were out here playing bad playing basketball where everybody else is playing football against you, I don't think you would be enthused to play, give you one hundred percent all the goddamn time, either, unless you were pissed off. So, so for me. You know, me and you got to it. it was like, all right, well, how do you break this up? And I was like, all right, well, I got Shaq at 10. Where, so it, I mean, I remember you initially before I even broke it down in the numbers. I was like, this is for me. This is my, you know, we were talking about my 
top or whatever else. And I was like, I got Shaq at... You said you have Steph in the top 10. I was like, well, I got Shaq at 10. He was like, mm. So... I had to go, and so then you suggested, all right, well, then break the tie, the 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 fake tie between Olajuwon and Shaq at 11. So right now, I have Steph at 11. Um, I know there are other people that I've been talking about it right now, and like, I think Bill Simmons says he has him at 10 right now. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my, you know, my, uh, my ranking is based off of the Bill Simmons things while making some adjustments because I think some things are kind of wonky, or not wonky, but some things kind of like, eh, with him. Um... So for me, that's where I'm, I have him at. I have him as limited basketball player all the time at 34, and like he's going to eventually pass Shaq. I'm not going to be happy about it. I'm going to bristle at it, but he, he will. Like Barnes, the type of injury that alters his career, he has another like five years of being a great player to some extent, and I think that's going to put him over the top against Shaq. Yeah, I think there's like there's a there's a great scenario that exists that he wins one more, and then we're talking about him and Kobe, and I'm going to be like. Mm. And that's I, the th- I, I'm be sitting there with the awkward smile right. on my face, like, yeah, because I remember saying to you on the air, like, you look at his playoff stuff, and it looks based like Kobe's the, numbers. Look, is- the one team stuff is like, mm. <laughs> so I remember saying that to you, is like his like his stats basically like because you know the injuries starting out super late because we're talking about like a uh, at this point like a 13 year prime with, with Steph, and it's like. His numbers, his playoff, or his, uh, like, since he got to his promise out of 13 and his playoff stuff, like, all that stuff basically looks like Kobe's num- exact same numbers, except, except one, he didn't do it for nearly as long as Kobe, and two, Kobe was also, like, one of the best defenders of his era, and Steph Curry gets picked on all the goddamn time. So, like, I'm not, I'm not ready to go there with the Kobe thing. I'm just not, I'm, I know there are some that will or whatever else and talk about, like, the peak of it and, and what have you. I just gotta. I, I I just. I'm just not there. I'm just not. I, I I'm not there. Um. We'll see how that goes with the rest of it. I think. I think it's in. Um. I think that it's in. Uh. What do you call it? ball in in the striking distance or whatever else, if you will. Um. For for Durant and for Steph. Uh. By the end of their careers, but we'll see how to how to, the last third of the careers go. Yep. Um. So yeah, man. Uh. The G one climax started uh or the blocks were released yes um let me go let me, ahead and do a little reset here so hey i have everybody. the i have the blocks oh okay yeah um everybody in the spaces make sure you guys share the link and all that we're gonna get our uh, we're talking about the g1 blocks and uh if you guys are on the twitch stream uh do us a favor and uh go ahead and spread the word all right, All so, right. So, uh, A block, we have Okada, Jeff Cobb, Tom Lawler, Lance Archer, Jonah, Bad Luck Fale, and Toriano. Um, with the B block, we have Ishii, Tomer Ishii, Taichi, Jay White, Great Okan, Sonata, Tamatonga, and Chase Owens. C block, we have Hiroshi Tanahashi, Tetsuya Naito, Zack Sabre Jr., Kenta, Hiroki Goto, um, what's the name? Henry Hanare? Aaron Hanare. Aaron Hanare. Aaron, I they changed it, yeah. Aaron Hanare, uh, in Evil. Um, uh, and then D Block, we have Will Ospreay, Takagi Shingo, Shingo Takagi. I don't, I did it in the back like I'm Japanese. <laughs> Shingo Takagi. Uh, uh, El Fantasmo, Yoshihashi, Juice Robinson, David Finley, and Yujiro Takahashi. So, uh, your thoughts on the layout of these four blocks? Man, they made these things almost as even as they could. So, there's not even really a block to pick on, I think. I so? think. But uh, I would say Okada kind of got slayed here. Uh, go out there and have match of the year candidates. And while you got bad luck, Folly and Toriano in your block, uh, you've got Lance Archer, good wrestler. I don't think you're going to have a match of the year with him. Right. Um, Jonah, a complete unknown, I feel like. Um, he can swing the tournament one way or the other. Like, I, you know, given what he did at NXT and given what he, uh, I, I, I think he could do in New Japan with some other big dudes, I think he's going to be fun, but I, I still got to see it first. Yeah. Uh, Cobb, he should be awesome. Yep. Uh, Filthy Tom should be awesome. Yep. But, yeah, that A block is o- Okada. 
a carry job. Uh, I feel like for a lot of this, like I, I don't looking at that block. I, I he's gonna matches, have think, he's gonna have to have everyone's best match. Yeah, like uh, you know Okada and Cobb. Uh, I'm looking forward to yep. uh, Archer and and Cobb. That's gonna uh, be fun. I'd probably say Jonah and Cobb would be, be interesting. Tom and Okada. And Okada and Archer? Did I already say that? Uh, I think you said Cobb first, but yeah, yeah, that's those are the matches on that one. Yeah, so I mean, <sighs> I think Okada wins that block pretty handily. Yeah, that's the one thing that I was thinking of about it was like one. I think this is like a, a version of like a Haas block with those three with, with with Archer and Jonah and and um and Cobb in there. Uh, and Fale. Yeah, sure, in Fale, but um. <laughs> But like Okada's gonna have to have everyone's best match, and like I, I don't think there's any illusions that he's that he won't win this block easily. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't think Filthy Tom is going through. Yeah. Um. So, so I guess we move on to the B block, as mentioned. Uh, Ishii Four type. blocks, James, and Ishi still in the B block, holding <sighs> it down the spirit. Oh man! All right, so um, as I mentioned, Ishi, Taichi, uh, Jay White, Okan, Sonata, Tamatanga, and Chase Owens. Um, I, I I I like this block. I think this block got spared of having any of like the the terrible way it down wrestlers. Like it has the benefit of that. Like I think all these wrestlers um, are good wrestlers. Um, so. Obviously, I think we start at the top. We start with Ishii, um, and you know, this a perennial MVP candidate for the G One. Um, ever since you've been watching the G G Ones, and um, hey, getting older, maybe maybe like one of the last times we'll see Ishii in the G One. You know, there's a certain reporting that was going around and said, you know, if this thing hadn't hadn't extended, you know, to 28, he, he may not have been in it this year. So, really. Yeah, he's he's kind of coming up on that on that chopping block with the age, mm-hmm. and you know they about to they about to Japan there. at him. They about to get him out of here soon. Well, so I don't know yeah. if he's going to do a vintage Ishii run, but I would not bet against it because yeah. and also like I mean if he if he is not available if they don't want him in the in the uh, G one that's fine. AEW will welcome him over here the same way that they welcome over, uh, you know, or American welcomes over Nor- 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 Suzuki now that he's basically done with G1s. So, whatever you want to do, he getting paid regardless. He'll be fine. Um, so yeah, like, I look around and I see Ishii Taichi, which is always a great match. Um, yep. Ishii and Jay White, which one of the best matches of 2020. Um, G1. Um, Okan, Okan. He always has White's number for some strange reason. Yeah. Um, Okan, which is just a person that's just going to come out there and a mirror is going to wrestle everyone else's matches. Say, uh, Sonata, who, when he, you know, up and down, but I think, I think it's up is going to be, uh, fun coming back. I've always been, I'm always a Sonata person. Uh, so, uh, Tamatanga, now that he's away from the, you know, the shtick of, or stick of being, um, you know, <sighs> Bullet Club and evil and all the heat that he would have in G ones before, you know. I think he's going and he has a stable of of quality opponents throughout. I think he's gonna have a solid um, G one and Chase Owens. He's there to be at the bottom of the block. Indeed, um, he's gonna I have some good matches early in the cards. I, I'm pretty intrigued to see what Tamatonga does uh, here. Because he is someone that, you know, he's a baby face now. Yep. And I think the most eyes are on New Japan now. I think a lot of people will be seeing him in this presentation kind of for maybe the first time, you know. So I, I'm interested to see, you know, what he looks like against a wide variety of people. Uh, I'm definitely interested in Okan yep. to see, like, another step forward for him. Is this going to look like, you know, him and White getting in there? Like, what's that going to look like? Um, would, he, would it be I, crazy if he's in, like, the last – if he's in contention on the last day? It would not be crazy. Um, yeah. He'll lose, but – it would not be crazy. I'm mm-hmm. looking at the A block and B block, and it feels like we're headed for Okada versus White, uh, if that's the way it, right. the semifinals. Lock yeah, I don't up. know how that goes either. 
Yeah, I I assume that each block winner they'll face off in semifinals, and but I don't know which way it's split. So if it's a case of where I think White will win the block because he's the champion, and then lose to whoever's you know wins a block, which is probably Okada, mm-hmm. gets Okada another shot later in the year, probably mm-hmm. wins the belt back. I'm I'm going forward here, but uh, that's kind of just how I'm seeing it, kind of kind of break down, but. Um, yeah, I want to see Ishii and Okan. I think that's that would be interesting. You mentioned Tai Chi. Um, I I think Tai Chi against Jay White it would be pervertedly interesting. <laughs> so because uh, it's gonna be like at this point, it's gonna be Tai Chi be like, "Hey man, enough of the bullshit. You want to wrestle or not?" Nah? And it's like you right. saying this, Tai Chi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I think um I think that happened in 2020 in the A Block. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I think so. Sonata, I'm not interested in Sonata at all. I will I never. I know. I will. I will I never. Know. Like I I've know. given up. On, I know. On, on, on Sonata. I'm the only. Um, I'm the only person with stock still. I'm the only one. <laughs> I know. I sold long ago. I, I know. This. This let me. This let me like my store good ass. You know, technical wrestler. Damn, leave me alone. Like y'all didn't bother. Y'all, y'all didn't bother me nearly as much when when I when I was a Randy Orton. You know, but 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 when it's when it's a Japanese person that, that is that is a classic, you know, textbook wrestler that's not charismatic and is also like up and down in performance, then 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 I get the shit. Okay, no. fine, whatever. So in the comment section, T Mess Sonata is aggressively not him. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's the thing though, like the the fan base, the domestic fan base takes him so much more than the Western fan base does. And like, I don't think people like appreciate, appreciate that when they talk about this, like whatever, whatever, whatever it is, what it is. I get, I get limitations too. I just like them. And he also dresses fly. So there's also he that does part. dress fly. Yeah. You know, that man, that, that man, that man dresses like he, he that man just up. fly in the ring and out the ring. Right. And that, look, you know, there's, there's something to be said about, you know, you dress for the part you want. And that man wants to be IWGB champion. If we ever get there, not fucking with evil, but I think there's, I think there was a way to get around that. They fucked it up, but whatever This We are where we are now. This is a new reality. I just got to deal with it, I guess. C-Block, James. Who's on C-Block? The C-Block. Ta- Hiroshi Tanahashi, Naito, Saber, Kenta, Goto, Hanare, and Evil. Um... I, this block is for me the block where it has the most amount of people that I trust. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I can't speak for you. I don't know how you feel about it because you know, obviously I'm higher on I'm higher on uh, Kenta than you are. But I feel like after Kenta went out there and uh and, and gave his life for this hardcore shit, <laughs> Russell kicked him. <laughs> and sure. you know what he was doing at Bud- at Budokan Hall on uh on one one and Noah like. I just, you know, I've always liked the dude um, since he came since he came to New Japan. Um, I, I think his um, I think his A block was underrated that year, and like I, I just like his stuff. Um, so um, he's back. I don't know what his health is like, especially considering like how quickly they send people out uh, when they're really really fucked up and injured. Um, yeah. Given this, was, given the thing, I have that. that sheds me. It gives me a new light on like how just how healthy exactly he is. Uh, the want to will be there. How will the body hold up to you know a lot of injuries on that body, a lot of brutal wrestling over the over the decades at this point. Um, high mileage. Yeah, really high mileage. Um, so I I think that he could swing this this block. I think he can make take this block over the top. He's the luxury in this. Like he's gonna have good matches regardless. But if he has great matches with a, with a Naito with a Tanahashi, uh, which they normally do have great matches. Um, with you know getting there with with saber um you know i think this is going to be a good block and also like this is also a block that can redeem a lot of what happened with the b block in 2020 when you know you had evil out there um in yano in the oh same block God. out there fucking sucking so I just realized I gotta watch it. We have to see another Naito and Evil match. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, you do. Fuck. You, I mean, you don't have to. I see mean, we it. don't have to see. You don't, it. You don't let's have get to that, see. Let's it. get that right. Yeah, you can just be like, nope, not doing skip. it tonight. Skip. Not today. Yep, yep. Uh, now look, but it's eighty. It's eighty-four matches before we even get to the. Uh, hey, before we ever get to it, I, who's next. to say you know which ones I'm gonna watch? That, you know? that Kenta Evil match is going to be disgusting. <laughs> Is gonna make you like squint at your screen. It's gonna make you hold your stomach while watching it. 
is going to make you just just start looking around and be like, why do I have this hobby? Why do I waste my time with this? <laughs> oh my god. So, um, you know, Naito Tanahashi is always a great match. Um, Tanahashi and Saber, they always have great matches. Um, Goto, Goto and Tanahashi they just had a good ass match. They'll have a better match whenever they get to it. Like, um, I, I think that I think I, I'm just going to say it like uh, I mentioned the, the call back to a lot of these uh, people in this block or, or a lot of B block in 2020 um, with no Yano around um, is going to obviously be better. But like, I, I just think like no juice this time. Um, I think it's going to be just overall better. Like I obviously, you know, don't I, the evil thing is going to be a problem. It's going to rear his head throughout the entire block. Maybe he has a match with any of these other uh, six people. But outside of that, I think like I just trust all these. I just trust all these vets and good ass wrestlers. I just do in this block. Uh, I think I'm going to pick Naito to win got? this block. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I think I'm, yeah, I'm going to pick think, Naito and then Naito. pick Naito to put over whoever's going to win D block. Which okay, so so I think I think the two people that are actually gonna have the biggest the chance to actually win this are gonna be Naito and Saber. Like I'm I'm just I'm just you know after what happened in 2020 um, where they eliminated Tanahashi before the um, the final, I'm, I'm just like all right. I don't think he's I don't think he's gonna have another real shot at this. Um, obviously, Goto, no. Um, for the sake of for the sake of my sanity, Evil is gonna be out to hunt. Um and so that kind of leaves you with like you know Kenta Saber or Naito, but I just don't, I, I don't think Kenta, you. you think you think he is as a spoiler. Potential Evil's spoiler. gonna hang around to the end. I can see that. Yeah, but I I, I will go with uh I think I think I will go with uh Knight or Saber. Yeah. And then there was one. Yeah. The, the D block. The butt of all our jokes last week. <laughs> yeah. The D block. Yeah. Um, they got, you know, they got a little bit more respect than, um, than I thought, like, I think, like, they're, I think their top two is the best two of any block, um, with Shingo and, and Osprey. Yeah. Um, but you got Osprey, Shingo, El Phantasmo, um, Yoshihashi, Juice, uh, David Finley, and Yujiro. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'm interested to see where Phantasmo ends up in all of this when you have Juice around. Um, you know, because they're both in Bullet Club, and you know, they, uh, so it's interesting to see where that goes. But you know, it's going to be Osprey and Shingo, you know, coming down to the wire on, on this block. I don't think I'm, I don't think they can even pretend to get sneak a third person in for this. Yeah, I, I'm very excited to see Phantasmo get his uh, test run as a heavyweight here. Uh, he's going to have <laughs> Will Osprey, Shingo. Those matches are must see. Yeah. Um, him and Robinson could be okay, but you know they're both bull clubs, so it could be weird. Maybe yeah. they're they're testing the grounds on turning OP face. Who knows? We already know Yoshihashi is going to wrestle for respect. Yep. Um, <laughs> David Finley, he has a match with Juice. I think that should be pretty interesting. Um, they do have. Uh, Am I? A f- <sighs> do you get any like? White guy show yo vibes off of uh, Juice and, and Finley, as if like they're 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 a tag team. There was a turn, and then they can get the match, and then the match just doesn't happen like you expect it to happen. Is it totally it- could happen because I mean I don't know what what Rock Hard Juice Robinson like. I I miss the the U.S. title match that he had when the four way. So I don't know what it'll look like you know at, during the G one. Uh, as far as like you know, what his tournament output goes, mm-hmm. but um, I think Finley's good. Um, yeah, he is. Just I just don't care. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm ready. Sign me up for a shingle will match any day of the week. Yeah, uh, these guys are all, like one of the best rivalries in the history of wrestling. Yep. Um, and I definitely want to see Will and Phantasmo. Like that's you know, sign me up. Big spots, baby. <laughs> And then Yujiro's here too, so you know. Yeah, three so, Bullet Club members in this block. Yeah, so who do you think is up being a low man in this, Finley or or Yujiro? Uh, I think block. it's gonna be Yujiro. 
Okay. Okay. But Yujiro's gonna sneak an upset on Shingo. He's done it before, hasn't he? He did it to Ibushi. Well, I meant like specifically, like for example, oh. um, you know, there's some where like, you know, like for example, uh, Yano in Suzuki, where it's like, oh, that that that's bound to happen. Or like for another yeah, example, yeah. like uh, Saki and Mayu, where it's like, oh, this person. Just... I don't think it's that obvious, but okay. I'm just kind of calling it. Okay. All right. All right. But uh, I think I think Will's gonna win this block. Um, they've got him doing this long storyline where he's getting screwed. He is still the U.S. champion. Um, I think you could easily do the G1 final of Kazushiro Okada and Will Ospreay. And, you know, Will could win. I mean, this whole thing is kind of like, you know, if they're doing two Wrestle Kingdom days and shit, it probably means nothing. So, like, right, a little bit of the G1 like they're setting, is... They're setting themselves up to do another double dash. Yeah, so, like, the G1 isn't... It doesn't mean what it did a couple years ago like as far as like hey lock it in and everything like that but um i think okada and osprey would be a nice g1 final and you could give will the big win there and still have an okada um you know title shot in, in the back pocket if you do okada and naito in the uh semi-final there or excuse me okada and jay uh beats beats jay Mm-hmm. Um, and then Okada, you know, essentially it's like you're losing the G1 final, but you still have a title. You did beat the champion. They can flip back to him, and then Will can be like, oh, it's on. And then, you know, Will beats him again in the Dome or whatever, however they want to do it. But uh, mm-hmm. I pick Will to win the G1. Well, I I'm, I can I see that because my two, my two in my mind were like, okay, so it's going to either be Okada or Jay White. I'm sorry, Okada or Osprey. Um, so yeah, it's one of those two. Um, like with Jay White being the champion, like I, I guess I could do Naito, but I don't want to see Jay White versus Naito. No, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. And there's there's still protecting. And, I mean, this, we've seen those before. I don't want to see that again. They're still protecting this Naito Will match. Uh, could they blow it off in a in a semifinal like situation here? They could. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, so I, I, I'm a little less positive about my my Naito C block win, but I'm definitely taking Will in the D block. Yeah, same here. All right, um, so where do we go from here? Road Rager AEW. Okay. Um. So yeah, we had a hair versus hair match. Chris Jericho versus Ortiz. This was awesome. This was like high energy. The crowd was really into this. Um, I figured that, you know, <laughs> Jericho was going to win. I, I I thought, you know, I didn't think Jericho wanted to go bald here, but Ortiz, you can always kind of do that. Um, you know, Jericho kind of is already working with his own situation um, in there. But this is another don't bet against Chris Jericho. Uh, one of these This is just the first of, um, you know, many fun things on the show. Excellent layout. Great match structure. High intensity, uh, great run-ins, like use of run-ins, uh, kicking out of the the Kingston run-in, and a uh, whole crowd was living and dying. Thought it was over, ends up getting a win on Ortiz. Uh, Ortiz pissed, shaves his own head. Um, after uh, Sammy Guevara dresses Fuego del Sol comes out, hits him with the bat. I immediately know it's Sammy because of Sam, the shoulders. Sam. Well, I, I can just tell by the face. I was like, oh, it's Sammy. I started laughing and I was like, oh, this is, this is Jerichoism because, you know, Jericho used to always do this shit where he shows up as a fucking luchador and it's clearly him. Like, remember, I, I pointed this out in the in the uh, in the thread at times. Like, do you remember at all in where like after the Pentagon or after the uh, the Okada match or Okada Omega match, like he shows up dressed as Pentagon and like yes. and then, like he shows up and he immediately has a fucking code breaker. It's like, oh, yes. you didn't even. Like one, I, this is bigger than Penta. You're taller than Penta, and then two is like you immediately do your fucking move. Like you fucking ham. You immediately like just to do it just to be funny. Like you're not even trying to like give the rules of you know it. It might be someone else. Like I'm immediately just doing this just to fuck with you. So like I thought that like there was some potential legs in you know they run up on uh, Fuego and Fuego was like what's going on? It wasn't me. And then eventually they reveal it to be. Sammy, but like Sammy does the evil deed and then ev- immediately reveals himself to be uh, himself, and I was like, "Oh, okay, so this is full on a Jericho uh, move." Okay, gotcha. 
Um, and like, I gotta say, I was happy about this because like, this gives me actually a reason to actually buy JSA. Like, uh, they, before it was Jericho and Daniel Garcia and some guys. Now, or uh, you know, Hager as a as a goon and some guys. Now it's like. We got Guevara, we got Garcia, and we got him. We actually got three actual valuable wrestlers in the, like in this faction that you know they're going to take care of and, and care about in this thing. And it's like, okay, they're not just disposable goons now. So I, I'm definitely with this. They definitely have upgraded this this uh from uh from the initial launch of this roster and also the the addition of getting the heat with 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 Tay Conti. Definitely, this yeah, is definitely much yeah, better. that's definitely that's much it. better. <laughs> I look for them long term now. Definitely, I think this is a good lifeline for Sammy because after they, they got them out of the TNC program, I was kind of wondering about him. He had disappeared mm-hmm. for a couple of weeks. They were on vacation. I was like, man, I wonder when he comes back to uh, putting him back with Jericho. I think, you know, some maybe like, oh, he's he's back with Jericho or whatever, but like... He just wasn't ready yet. Yeah. Or not, not just, that he... Or maybe for instance, not that he wasn't ready yet. The crowd wasn't ready for him to... Made. The crowd wasn't ready for him to be on his own yet to that extent. And like, that's fine just to go back because like, there was... They made sure to point out that there was no burn, no bridge burned between Sammy Guevara yeah. and them. Like it's not like he screwed them over too, and Eddie Kingston stuff, or Jericho and JSA screwed over Eddie him as well. And then all of a sudden, it's like some out of nowhere. It's like nah, like he had no bad break with Hager and Jericho. There, and I thought oh, eventually he was gonna have to decide between Santana Ortiz and Jericho and Hager, and he just did. So this was actually a nice, you know, thread to pull. Yeah, um, or sorry, actually, you're, you're, hammer or what do you uh, button to press? Actually, that's that's the phrase I'm going for. Sorry, put puts him back in that that spot with Jericho. Puts him and Daniel Garcia kind of like diametrically like opposed to each other. It was a little bit of tension in there. They did have a brief uh, stare down in the ring. You, I think that's something to to keep in uh, mind. Was, of. They had a very spirited match earlier this that's year. That's what I was getting at. Do you think that was them playing off of the fact that like they had that match earlier in the year, or do you think that was just like? Possibly. You're the you're the you're the you're the pillar. I'm the killer, or or, or, or both. And add, add it all up, mix okay. it in. Okay. You know, uh, Warlow in the class action lawsuit. Warlow versus twenty security guards. I thought this stunk. It did. This it was supposed to be long. good, but it just didn't have. It's just like the bell rang, and it was like they didn't have an idea of what they wanted to do. I mean, they didn't neither tell did everyone. Not, neither, did, neither did Dasha, because she thought like throwing people that never got into the ring off the apron was elimination. And it was like what? And then it, it then it was twenty people, and he's stacking people up for pins, and like people's mat, shoulders aren't even you know facing towards the mat, let alone on the mat. It was like uh, uh yeah, this was painful. Yeah, it, it, it felt and like it went on forever because it was twenty people. He had to keep he had to keep doing like the same level of grouping up three and four at a time and then putting them down and then you know putting the foot on the pin them and it kept and like it was almost like when uh Jim Cornette talked about chair shots, like there's only a certain number of weapon shots you have out of a weapon before people like you get diminishing returns on it. And mm-hmm. like apparently the same thing for, for murdering murdering jobbers. It's like twenty is way too many. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking like after the second round of them, I was like, all right. Let's, let's read the picture. Like, the crowd, right. like yeah. the crowd was like just not in it anymore, and mm-hmm. um, this is I think this is a mistake. Um, yeah, second, it was a it was a it was a fumbling. Yeah, Dax Harwood versus Will Osprey. Man, excellent match here uh, with these guys. And I I just heard. Did you think of, it was a fringe match of the year contender though? Like Dave Meltzer thought. I did not. Uh, okay. I, I thought just, I thought just, it was a really just, good match. I wouldn't argue if someone was like four four and a half. I think that's where you know I, I landed on it, and um, I thought Will was just like he walked in on day one and he was just like, "Yo, I'm levels above like <laughs> whoever, like like he's he's him." Um, so a lot of people <laughs> he's going, him. And he's in third gear. That's yeah, the, like, that's the part that's the best about it. Is like he's not. He didn't go the- out there to try to have some match of the year. No. He didn't. He no. just was like, yo, here's the wear. Here, here's the experience. Like, I said this. Did I say this last week? He's going to go out here. He's going to have his match with Dax. And he's going to just basically wrestle a, a basic match. And they're going to chop and shove each other. And he's not going to do any of the super duper stuff that he does. And and, and and all these people that talk about how he's a video game wrestler this in third are going to have to eat that shit because they're going to see this match and he doesn't do all that shit. It's just gonna, still going to be great. And they're going to be like, and then people are going to be like, 
that have heard all this stuff about Will Ospreay, that haven't watched him and think he's still 2016 Super Juniors, Will Ospreay, and they're going to be like, oh, this guy is different, or or maybe or maybe people were wrong about him. This was exactly what the fuck he did. It's almost like you listen to the fucking podcast, even though, like, it wasn't that hard to predict this was going to happen, but, like, yeah, he's not... He's going to come out here, even even like the super, the stuff he does in New Japan now. Introducing Under Armour's Infinity High Sports Bra. Its ergonomic design is molded to support the natural movement of your body. With cord out padding, the better breathability eliminates extra bulk without sacrificing support. And quick dry padding is Under Armour's fastest drying padding yet. When you're lifting heavy, running fast, and pushing yourself further than ever before, you need a bra that will help you go that extra mile and make you feel your best. Shop the Infinity High Sports Bra now at UA.com. Target has laundry day covered because they offer a great selection of concentrated Tide Pods to help with all your laundry needs. Tide Pods clean, freshen, and help rejuvenate your clothes with odor fighters and stain removers. Did you know Tide Pods clean better than the leading liquid bargain detergent? Tide Pods are powerful enough to make your whites white and your brights bright, even in cold water. Just toss in one Tide Pod for small loads, two for medium, three for large. It's that easy. For great value and convenient pickup options, get Tide Pods today at Target. Our last couple of years compared to what he was doing, let's say 2018, 17, or whatever else, it's totally different. But, like, he wasn't doing a bunch of dives. He wasn't, um, you know, doing a bunch of, like, Big, big, stiff strikes in a row and having a huge strike exchange of falling, getting up, or no selling stuff, going back and forth. He had a pretty, and even the stuff he, when people complain about like uh, modern wrestling and talk about like people turn their back to people after they land a strike and then they run, hit the ropes, come back. Like he explained all that with Dax, where he would get his, he would make, he made the mistake of he did the strike and then he tried to do that and tried to run to the ropes and like Dax would always grab him and suplex him or grab him and put him in a move because that shit don't fly for his, you know, J, you know, JCP ass, right? Like they did the match they were supposed to do. It was a perfect melding of both of their styles and their beliefs in wrestling, if you will. And it was a great match. And like, I didn't buy a single near fall in that match till until the final, until the final uh, finish. But everyone else in the crowd did, and they loved it. I gave it four and a quarter. I thought it was great. And, like, the people that keep saying this Will Ospreay dude ain't dope, you want, if he keeps showing up on AEW television and keeps having these matches as one eventual and an eventual uh, All-Atlantic champion, as the U.S. champion in New Japan, as the Forbidden Door stuff happens every year or twice a year, Y'all are going to look foolish. Y'all better stop this now because he keeps scoring 40 on you. You keep telling me he ain't dope. I'm sorry. It's going to keep happening. Yeah. Um, this guy, I think he's the best wrestler going. And I, it wouldn't be the first time somebody I thought it was the best wrestler in the world is getting ridiculous hate. That is just like that. That that literally like makes me question if people actually like know what the fuck they're watching. Um, yeah, man. Like when this shit's all folded up and history's done for for this era. Like the people that are gonna have the biggest influence are all the people that are getting yelled about. The Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Will Osprey. Like that's who everyone's gonna steal off of. There are already Osprey clones coming up. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Nick Wayne? Yeah, it's already. I haven't happening. watched that match yet, but I'm gonna go check it out. I heard people. I heard. I heard people say it was great. Yeah. It's already happening. These people are going to have like like. It's not. Look, you know what? Like, if you don't fuck around and come around to it, you know who's gonna come around to it? Your kids. Your kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and you, you gonna sound go. like you gonna sound like the same people that was out here when you were at a certain age and you were like losing your mind about Rey Mysterio and you'd be like, oh, it's just heads. This is what's so important. What's so special about that? It's a head system. Okay. 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 Run with that one. See how far it gets you in the long run. You are going to lose over time on this one. You you just are. I too, Lotherio Negro, need that Osprey and Omega match. I too need that match. I mean, look, man. Do we? I don't think we talked about it last week, I, or I don't remember. But like the match proposed was actually we did talk about it. the match proposed was Andrade and Osprey, and I gotta say, man, that that shit hurts. That shit hurts. That match would have been fucking incredible. 
Like politics those, as usual. Yep. Like those are two of. I mean, I have to think about it, but those got to be like two of my twenty favorite wrestlers going right now actively. Jesus. Yeah, <sighs> that sucks. It's a it heartbreaker. Really it really sucks. They, they would have tore the fucking house down. Like, you remember, and it had been funny because, like, you know, um, there were people when when Andrade first came to AEW that doubted, and including Dave Meltzer was like, you know, he only wants, you know, he only wants to have great matches, so and so. And it's like, okay, how about this Pac series? How about this Darby? And, how about this Darby series? So Osprey, oh man, they would have they would turned up went insane in this match. They would have hit the shot of each other. They would have been flying and hitting. It would have been some like they would have tried to have a match of the year candidate. It, I mean, I don't know if they would have tried, but it would have came out. <laughs> they would have, you know, like <laughs> it'd have fought around and ended up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So after that match, um. Uh, Dax loses via the hidden blade. Yep. Uh, then the United Empire came out uh, and joined them in a post match beatdown. But Cash Wheeler came out and then Rapungi Vice. And then also uh, after that, the returning Orange Cassidy ended and we got a stare down face to face. And we found out Orange Cassidy and Will Ospreay was booked for Forbidden Door for the IWGP US title. I would have liked to see someone else but Orange Cassidy, but. It should be a fun match. Yeah, um, I'm I'm a little bit less in. How do I say this? I believe in the match more now, but I'm also have like my uh, my entry level is lower because of the the match uh, Orange Cassidy had with Pack. Um, was it 2020? Yeah. So like, like I know it's gonna be good because I know it's gonna be kind of a take on that, but it's like, I've already seen that match, so I'm not as, I'm not as gassed for it, but like, I do now, like, instead of being like, having to wonder, like, what the hell is it gonna be, I know what it's gonna be, because of cause that match, so, yeah, um, we'll see, like, Osprey is gonna have some things up his sleeve that, um, that Pac wouldn't have, but, you know, either way, it's gonna be a great match. I think I would've liked to see Pac here, um, or, <laughs> or Darby, or Swerve, but that's okay. I, I mean, um, I, I agree with you. Um, I uh, I don't know what Darby doesn't have a match yet. Neither does Swerve. Yeah. Um, but at least with the the Pac thing, Pac's gonna be in a fucking barn burner anyway. So like, I mean, no, a lot of talent is spread around this card. Yeah, uh, Moxley and Tanahashi in ring promo. So uh, I, I'm seeing this this happen. I'm like, man, we're about to get this face to face. You know, Mox gonna cut a great promo. Tanahashi going to pick up the mic. He's going to cut a great promo and really show everybody what, what the ace is about, you know, verbally on the mic. And uh, that ain't what happened, though. Um, oh, yeah, so, that's exactly what you thought was going to happen, right? That's what I thought. It, it was uh, going to be like it was going to be like the John Cena, AJ Styles confrontation. You know, it was Tanahashi was going was gonna to put it to him, you know. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, like Mox like laid this – you know, the groundwork for us. And, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of titles in this, this business, but there's only one person they're going to call the ace. I'm going to beat you. You're going to call me the ace and all this other stuff. He has this one weird line about Tanahashi ducking him, which I wish he would stop saying, but why do you, why do you want to stop saying it? Cause I think it's stupid. It's like, he's not running from you. Like who, like nobody believes you when you say this. <sighs> I mean, I, I see it as it's it's fighting words more than actual truth, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's just like nobody joins in with you on this one, Mox. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, given the story of like, like he's been, like he's wanted this match for like what um, almost three years, and he hasn't gotten it. Obviously, nothing because of uh, Tanahashi or uh, or New Japan actually like holding off the match, just because of the world. Like, yeah. I, you like, know, did you forget the pandemic, Moxley? Like, what the fuck? Like, look, I, look, I, I, I see where he's coming from. I don't think he actually believes that. I, I don't think it's a Jay White thing where he's like, I sold out the, you know, the oh, thing about there. sold out yeah, Madison yeah. Garden. Like, I think it's a like, I, I'm trying to get under your skin. I, I think it's, I think it's that. But you know, I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter. I thought it was, I thought it was a well delivered promo, and then, like, I, I like, you know, it made me like lean forward in the chair. Like mm-hmm. I, it was one of those, so um, I, I enjoyed it. And then uh, Jericho came out. Yes, bro. And then Jericho came out. Uh, we heard Jericho's music. 
just cutting off, we we was going to get a promo of the year from Hiroshi Tanahashi. Unfortunately, we did not. Um, it's going to be MJF Punk. You know, he was about to about to take it to him, showing why why his ace essentially. But um, you know, uh, you, Jericho comes. Were out. you expecting him to do? Respect him to basically like lean forward in the moxie and be like, "I can smell it, you bitch." <laughs> Like Casey did to Jericho. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh man. He was gonna he was gonna call that man the worst member of the shield or something, like, you know. <laughs> you know he watched WWF too. Yeah. Oh, you know he watched WWF too, so yeah. Um but Jericho comes out and he's fucking in rare form, just knowing he he has so many things to accomplish. He has to tell y'all Sam Guevara and Tay Conti are in uh, this whole thing. He mm-hmm. has to set up a tag match essentially for next week. Mm-hmm. Do the angle to introduce all these other people. Mm-hmm. Exposition dump everything yep. oh, like in in one. It's like, bro, I one take. I'm like, I'm like yo, he's so fucking great. Like, I I, I just like loved every, all of this, and you know, I think. Some people think this was chaotic. Yes, that's the point. It, it, it is chaotic. It's Chris Jericho at this point. Like, um, he says he should be in the match. He wasn't in the Battle Royal last week. Uh, he beat Tanahashi before, so he should really be there. And then, you, see, you know, he's had the thing going with Mox anyway with JAS and uh, the BCC. And it's just like, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, uh, Archer and El Desperado show up. Uh, and and jump on Tanahashi and uh, Mox, and then uh, Jericho gets in, on the mic in the ring and says, "Both Tay and Sammy are in the Jericho Appreciation Society and calls them low stress sex gods and says they'll have sex right now." And then uh, the Suzuki Goon members were on loan from Minoru Suzuki. Yes, Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> he said exactly like that, and I fucking how was like you. Minoru Suzuki, uh, the Goon, Desperado Goon out here, uh, and the old team with Jericho and Guevara at or Suzuki would team with Jericho and Gubara for Bindor. They're going to take on Wheeler Yuta. Shota Umino, the ref. Oh, you like him? I, I beat that kid up at the Tokyo Dome in front of his dad. Red Shoes, the ref. Yes. And I popped when you said that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. I, this man is the best. Like, it's he's like, the fucking best. This was one. Like, I'm, su- I'm fucking surprised that Jericho remembers he beat up Shota in front of Red Shoes. Like, wh- why would he remember that? Not, not that, you know... Wh- like not that I don't remember because I remember it. I, 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 you know, I've always Jericho thought remembers funny, when, when he the, whoops ass. But the part where he remembers it and then ties to the storyline when he once showed once showed it got a pop was like that's great. Like I, did he have that in the chamber just in case? And just in case, like on the off chance that Shota was going to get a pop in front of this, uh, what city were they in? St. Louis. St. Louis. This St. Louis crowd was going to pop for Shota Umino. I didn't fucking know that was going to happen to you. I did not. Yeah, but it happened. The Jericho was ready. Go figure. Look at him, always ready. <laughs> the real always ready. Yeah. Um. So after that, Ethan Page and Miro all Atlantic qualifier. Miro picks up the win. This went a little bit longer than it felt like it needed to, but yeah. mm, I, I guess Miro's there. a baby face now. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a face. The match was just there. Yeah. Um. Then we saw uh, Jay Cargill issuing an open challenge, and then Willow Nightingale accepts it uh, for Rampage. So they set up a, a match there. Uh, Stokely acted like uh, Willow wanted to join the baddies. James, do you think Willow Nightingale should join the baddies? Um, I think that her and the baddies would be a good fit. I'll leave it at that. Um, Thank then you. we. <laughs> um s- speaking of willow nightingale uh it was announced that she's also going to be on the tokyo joshi pro show this summer she'll be taking on miyu watanabe yes um and if they do what i think they're going to do in that match that is going to be shared on twitter for a few, for like a week or so like if she big sw- if she if miyu can big spin or giant swing um willow like that's going to be on the Joshi guest for a week. And that's going to, I think there's going to be able to cross over, um, into the, the American, uh, wrestling streams. Like when they see like 
Nats boy doing something cool or or Azumi or whatever else. Like I think that was gonna I think this would be a big deal. I think it's gonna be a big uh, a big deal on, on Twitter. There's also a match book between Thunder Rosa and Miyu Yamashita. Yep. Uh, that should be excellent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Depending on the forward. politics of it and, yeah. what, you know, what that can mean with the AEW Women's World title. Yeah. Uh, uh, it may be a title defense. I'm not sure. Who knows? So Also, uh, I believe it's been announced. Um, uh, the winner of the of the of Pro Wrestling Eve's She Won tournament, um, Alex Windsor, a person that uh, JD from Red Leaf Retrocast has mentioned, is like she seems like the best or one of the best um, Western women's talents that, that's out that hasn't like seems like someone that would based on talent would be signed or picked up um, by a major. Like she is going to face uh, Maki Ito for the POP title, the uh, basically like their SWA belt. It's or there's it's her second belt, but like it's like it functions as like SW belt. Like they, they put they have guidance face for face off for like Ito in 2020 faced uh, Thunder Rosa for it. So so yeah, yep. Yeah, um, we got uh, Tony Storm versus Britt Baker in this match. This was decent. Uh, I thought Britt actually did a very good job uh, selling in this match uh, that she was knocked silly by Tony Storm's ass. Um, I, I think Britt kind of played on the perception of people thinking she was soft a- into that one, and I think she really like pulled people in uh, before you know laying it down. Uh, there was some interference that was going on uh, in the middle of the match that led to Thunder Rosa coming out, coming out, um, and running off Jamie and uh, Rebel. Tony gets the uh, clean win over Britt Baker, who I was told has you know from the internet that she doesn't like doing jobs or choose this master manipulator or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, but um, <laughs> so Britt loses clean as a sheet and uh, she sets up Tony storm uh, for Thunder Rosa and they will be taking on each other at forbidden door. Yeah. So the match is okay. Uh, as far as the spot that she did where like um, Thunder or Thunder uh, Tony storm does a running hip attack into the uh, Brit who's seated against the bottom ropes. I, I I do not like that spot. Um, like the spot is predicated on she is not reacting as if she got hurt. Like selling like wrestling, she got hurt like for real hurt. Mm-hmm. And then from there, she laughs and fakes it off. It's like, can you not break the fourth wall for me during the middle of your rinking dick ma- ass match in the middle of the fucking card? Like I, it's not it's not that important to do that right now. Like. If you're going to do that, save it for your biggest show match of the year. They actually be like, like it, 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 it. It's like okay, so the next time you do that again, why would anyone buy it? Well, I don't, I don't know if it's a, it's a thing that she intends to do more than once. But it's just weird. It's like okay, so she takes the the hip hip attack, and then Tony goes to grab her off of to go grab her to you know presumably hit the storm zero or whatever else or go to the next move if you will the way it looked and then like she just like no I'm hurt don't don't do nothing to me and and it's like I thought that we're aspiring to be a fight and it looks like you just don't want to cooperate because you're legitimately injured and then like you go and then they go and it happened twice and then they, they do the whole thing and they start as if like they want to throw up the a- double X or whatever she's concussed and I like I'm sitting there like she can cuss mm-hmm what the fuck are they doing? She's in cuss. What, what what's going on here? Why are they stalling? Like, just call the match. It's over. And then the, she got some like, oh, I got you. I'm like, what? Why would you want to get me in that way? That I understand like the idea of like you you work because she wants like, to work pur- you for the purpose of what though? She it didn't was make the match really, really, that, really, really, really injured and to fool her opponent to throw her off guard. Like, hey, I took your best shot, but I'm gonna make you think I'm, um, you know, you got me out of here but i'm gonna try to deceive you okay so i guess my problem is like you also made tony it's one thing to dupe us in theory you also duped tony storm like by she didn't want to get up for your move and you pulled away from getting up for her move you see what i'm saying i think the only real issue with this is like um is when like, like at least she took a move and she got hit. It's not like she's Jay White and collapsing on the ground. Um, oh, that's to, totally to, different. That, that that's a, that's that's. Uh, I fucking hate that more. Like, yeah, I was gonna say like, I, I was like yeah. that's like 
I I, 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 I I think that's fundamentally the dumbest thing in the world because it's like oh, you can't pin me because I'm laying down. How about I just stomp your face in? You fucking right, idiot! Right, right, right. Like that, that, but that too is like the same thing. Again, it's like you're exposing it. Like this is Ogus Pocus and your in, in your fan and your like uh, opponents are fucking morons. They can't just like, all right, if this was a real fight, I stomp your face in, or if. Britt Baker is going to back off and not, you know, get into the action after I hit her with a move or whatever else. Then like, and I sat there as she fakes me out by not going up for my, by like not reacting in a way about reacting in a way that like, she doesn't want to cooperate. It's it, like, this is totally different, but it rides on the same thing of like, it makes your opponent look like, sh- like an idiot, but, um, whatever. Like I, it is not, I spent too much time talking about this already, but yeah, it was just a match. It was fine. Um, I, I think their tag matches smoke the matches they've had already uh, in singles capacity. Um, like the matches they had, um, uh, was it Thunder Rose? No, who who was Tony Storm's team? Oh, Ruby Ruby Soho. Ruby Ruby Soho, and then also Jamie. I thought those tag matches smoked um, both of these singles matches. Uh, but yeah, like Tony gets the win, and uh, with the help of uh, Thunder Rosa, who was knocking, getting rid of, or um, the interference from. Re- Rubble or Reba and um, Jamie, so that sets up their match at Forbidden Door, which uh, you know um, there there is no New Japan Women's Champion, so to get get uh, a women's match on Forbidden Door, like that's a good one. That is a good one. You know, former Red Belt Champion versus uh, former Tokyo Joshi uh, Princess Champion. So this is really Princess like. Champion. You know, you know, this is really you know forbidden door <laughs> right there. You know, <laughs> no, that is, that part is yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, main event: uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus defending the World Tag Team Titles against the Young Bucks. Yep, pretty good makeup match, right? <sighs> Scratch it last minute. Had to, get, you know, it's supposed to be six people in the match, and it turned into four. And um, I think this match was better than if it had been six people in the match. It's been, I uh, agree. in particular, those six people. I agree. Four and three quarters for me. Um, I'm just, with you. <laughs> just, I'm with just you. like this is what um, the young bucks do at this point. This is what Joan Boy and Luchasaurus does. Like, wh- let's talk about their title reign for a minute. Okay, their title reign was spent having a lot of great matches. Mm-hmm. Um, but all these people did was scream for the belts to be off of them in almost every scenario. Um, these guys were day, like came up from the bottom in this company. They've transformed to a place to where it looks like jungle boy may be going, you know, a a certain way. He, he kind of, he has a landing spot. Off of this, Luchasaurus mm-hmm. not so much. Right. You can probably figure something out for Luchasaurus if you really thought hard enough. Uh, best friends are all sitting right there. But that's a, this that's is a, like that's like the land of like of, of uh, what do you call it? Uh, misfits, the, misfits, and yeah, yeah. But I was uh, I was happy to see Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus defend the belts throughout. Pretty much, they got a half year run with these things, and they were built up, and you know. You can't tell me people didn't want that shit when you know they when they first won them shits and all that. I don't know what caused people to just besides everyone needs to have a turn and win the belts. Like besides that, I, um, maybe there was a thing where like they just didn't show enough character, so therefore people you know should they like, just start ripping Bret Hart matches off instead? Would that show more character? I, I think I think it's a that's a that's a very good point. I think it's a thing where. Um, they j- they seemed like week in week out when or not week in week out they weren't on the show every single week but it seemed but it, it was like a lot of the same talks people were having about like the hangman thing when hangman was champion where it's like yeah or even sammy right great defenses blah 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 but where is it as far as the character in the, in the how come you aren't tricking us into liking our great matches that you already have that I know are going to be great the second they get announced it's like. Do you hear yourselves talking? <laughs> a match was set up. You know it's going to be great, but then you also need to be tricked into liking the wrestling. I'm, I, I, I don't, I don't know. You need to be emotionally tricked. Like I understand that, like you have a CM Punk, 
a uh, John Moxley. Need to be tricked, man. A you know, I understand there's lots of people that are really good at tr- Chris Jericho. They're really good at tricking you into liking these matches. But if you already know the match is gonna be good, just use the excitement of that. Like I don't, I don't understand why. Like I, I don't get it. I just don't at times. I just don't. And like I'm sorry. Like when you tell me there's going to be a match in Orlando that's going to do, uh, be a three way tag team championship match between Lucha. Uh, I'm sorry, Jungle Express, Jurassic Express, Jurassic Express, uh, Jurassic Express, and the, and the Young Bucks, and um, and Red Dragon. Sign me the fuck up. I don't. If you want to do something else, that's really nice of you. I don't care. I was gonna say I'll be there. I literally was there for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I I don't get it. So like when people keep, you know, people kind of. Or like, well, you know, is it time to, you know, do this at a third with, with whatever championship belt in AEW? Is like, do we have to do every single champion that is ever champion in AEW? Is there a champion we haven't done this with? Or not we, I'm talking about like people that you see online. Yeah, it's just like they all want the, they're just living and dying for somebody to beat them the whole time they got the belt. And it's like, bro, like, y'all not know what y'all like. Or seeing the level of quality from all these champions, like just literally pick a bad champion in this company. Like it's it's vi- like I'm sure they're there, but it's very hard to find. Like there are quality reigns and defenses. But I, all I, would, the time. I would argue like the only bad champion that we've had, like match to match, belt to belt, would probably be Britt Baker. I think that's it. Yeah. So. And in that time, she turned into a drawing card and a, and a star. So cool, like I like. <laughs> but if that's the worst thing we can say about her, all right, cool. But like, I know there was. But that's a, one out of how many title reigns? How many AEW World Champions have we had? Uh, Jericho, Moxley, Omega, Hangman, CM Punk, and then we'll have her in the room. So that's five right there. TNT uh, champions. We've had Cody. We've had Darby. We've had uh, uh, Luke Harper, not Luke Harper, uh, Luke Brody Harper, Lee. but I can't remember his name. Brody Lee, uh, Miro, Miro. Uh, I already mentioned Darby Sam Sammy Guevara, uh, and Scorpio Sky. Right? Is that the seven? Yeah. All right. So that so now that's we're at twelve right now. So now with the women's the uh, the women's uh, world championship, we have uh, Riho, we have uh, Nyla, Nyla, we have Sheeta. Uh, from Sheeta, we have Britt, and then we ha- now we have Thunder Rosa. That's five, right? Yep. All right, so now we're at 17. Tag champions. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, SEU. Yep. Uh, Omega and Hangman. FTR. FTR, Young Bucks, Lucha Bros, and uh, Jurassic Express, and now it's back That's to Young Bucks. Bucks. So that is six champions. So... Like, yeah, so, uh, 14, so, yeah, so, like, I don't, I don't, so, there's 24 champions, only one of them bad? What are we doing here? I, I think, I, I kind of think TK knows how to pick them, just, just a hunch. Um, you know, there was, like, some feeling like, yeah, but Jungle Boy and Loose Stores may be the third most important tag team with the belts, because FTR caught fire in the first half mm-hmm. of the year, we've seen the Bucks catch fire um which is kind of like i think if you're an ftr fan you may be getting the lemon booty right now with, with, with the young bucks and what they about to do right now but um just want to say jungle boy and loose source are awesome but to the young bucks add it to the resume Th- james i don't think this is one of the 20 best young bucks matches i've ever seen uh i would say like i mean let, let me i would put it this way um I don't know where to rank it amongst the three big matches that, or the other two big matches they've had this year with FTR or with um, the Lucha Bros. But um, what I will say is, like, this is not as good as the first three. Yeah, the first three Lucha Bros matches I've seen in AEW. <laughs> so it's like, and, and this is fucking phenomenal. Like, yeah, these guys are automatic. In, in, in a in a week where Steph and Clay get another one, so do the Young Bucks. Like <laughs> they're so fucking great, love them. Um, I, I saw some people crying. Uh, some people like Dax Harwood crying on Twitter. Uh, Wait, it was what? Pretty funny crying on Twitter about, about what? the Bucks when when the bells. 
LOLing and all this other stuff and, you know, laying the groundwork, I would imagine, for, you know, their match. Yeah. But like, that it's kind of a corny way to uh, build it up to me, but please just own. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, and people have seen FCR have, like, you know, be the number one contender for a long time. They're, they're kind of, like, being pretty loud about that. They are not noticing it, what is really happening because, like, FTR themselves like or their fans? Their fans. Okay. Gotcha. Um to where like, you know, if you're if you're that upset the the Young Bucks have won it again, like, well, what is the big match that's waiting for the Young Bucks with the championship? Who did they do a clean job to in early this year? Yeah. Was it March? March. Yeah. yeah. I it doesn't take a genius, or apparently it does, um, to <laughs> see that hey, that's probably right. going to be the big match that's set up right. FTR and the Young Bucks the second half of the year. Right, and you know what? Like we try, I think that me and you try to stay humble on this thing. We you know predict certain things, and people you know want to point or we point out that like oh we were right about that, or or people point out to us like oh yeah you you mentioned this or whatever else, and I, it kind of like yeah man, but I, I don't think it really took. You right. Know, I don't think it really took much more thought to realize where this thing is headed or where it was going to go or whatever else. And then, but then, like you know, and then other times when like uh, maybe we maybe we should be like you know what we're smarter than a lot of these motherfuckers out here because I don't I don't understand what the problem is. Yes, like the the young bucks. Like think of what FCR by the end of next week are probably going to have what f- not three championships, three world tag titles, possibly between Triple yeah. A. And Ring of Honor and uh, New Japan, Maybe New Japan, New Japan yeah. World Junior uh, no, World Heavyweight Tag Titles, right? Um, they are building their resume and case for for being for winning PWI Tag Team of 2022, um, and good for them for winning themselves their their you know kayfabe uh, title, whatever else. Uh, ultimately, regardless of whatever happens, that leads you to eventually is going to come down to them having the big blow off match with the Young Bucks and the and obviously like this is the end of it this is they're having a third match. Like they're gonna have a they're gonna have a fourth, fifth, and sixth one uh over the next uh three or uh, two, three years. But like they're gonna have a match there and because the first match is the match people remember out of the two matches they've already had because it happened at pay per view, the Young Bucks are going to put over F T R. And I'm and I can almost guarantee you it's not going to be them doing a love letter to pro- the tag team pro wrestling from the 80s and 90s. It's going to be them being them versus the Young Bucks being them. And they're going to blow the fucking roof off. And it's going to be a better match similar to how the second match is better than the first match. And it's going to be better. It's going to go longer. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a match of year contender. And they're going to crown FCR. And people rejoice or whatever else. And it's going to look very similar to what we were saying. Relax. Um, clinch your butt cheeks. Hangman's <laughs> going to win the AEW World Title, and then and then I'll be like, "Well, how did people not see this?" And then at this point, I'll be like, "You know what? I said it on the show. We need to stop being humble." And I'll be like, "We told you, motherfuckers, stop being dumb." Yep. Like, stop thinking. Like, I I don't even know like what it is. Like this irrational fear that people have. Like, but what? But what if they? De- what if they set up the obvious booking and don't pull the trigger on it? I'm sorry. Let me stop you right here. This is all elite wrestling. This is not world wrestling entertainment. They don't cut people off like that. If anything, they dedicate themselves to a, to a place where someone has to get a win, and they win, and then eventually have to take it off of them soon because they don't want to do it. But they always get it, pull, pull, pull a thread, and then follow through when it comes to a title. Almost like, always. I, I can't have there been a time where someone like they were on precipice and then didn't, didn't get it in, in a chase. I can't think of or anyone on short notice I'm sorry. right now. Yeah, so there you go. So if you want to watch wrestling like just a fan, right? Cool. Watch it like a fan, right? Don't be so like, but then don't come out here and get worked by Dax into thinking <laughs> like you, he's like, they actually believe him. Like when he does this thing, like the young bucks are burying us, like it riles those people up. That just hate the young boys so bad, but I'm like, y'all. Then hate, why do they like, keep doing matches with them? This isn't right. Brett and Sean. <laughs> right, they keep working together. <laughs> but but I'm like, if you want to watch it as a fan, all right, don't get worked by Dax 
what Dax is talking about, like this political stuff or whatever, right? If you just want to watch it strictly as a fan, watch it from that angle, right? But if you want to be someone that listens to shows like these and all that, like we're going to give it to you, like from the, like what should be obvious, I feel like, but it is, it apparently but, not. But it is obvious, right? Like, the same logic when I'm watching, like, uh, a show like Justified or a show like The Wire or a show like Breaking Bad, it wouldn't be as fun if they did not set up certain things that lead you down the line of thinking we're going to reach an, a natural conclusion or a natural point, and then from there, any uh, a certain number of things can happen. Right. Like that is that is that is good storytelling. The bad storytelling is when you set up something and and then like you either get to it and then you give you something that's unsatisfying or you tease something and then like Chekhov's gun. You pretend like the gun was never in the room and it never goes off to shoot anything. Right. That's not what AEW has ever done. That's not what most good TV shows do, unless it is to set up a gun to then later reveal there is a bazooka instead, right? Like that, that's so I don't understand why this keeps happening. Like for example, the bazooka instead would be like an example of um when uh the uh, inner circle realize and cop to uh or not cop to but basically like turn or basically flip the script on MJF. The MGF mm-hmm. was ahead and also pulled out the pinnacle. Like that is that is super villain <laughs> stuff. That is the bazooka. Like, but that is like super obviously that's a level of like super villain, uh or like, you know, like mystery level super villain type of thing, where it's like, there's no way he fucking knew this and would go through all this stuff then to reveal that like he has all this stuff, but whatever, we'll go with it because it's, it's taking us to a fun place. But It like, was me, I was evil. Right. But but like this isn't that hard to figure out. Like they're setting up two very strong tag teams that already have two, you know, very good ass tag matches with each other. They're both placed at the top as being like a one A one B. Like they're eventually going to clash later in the year, and it's going to be an awesome match. Like I don't see why you can't, why people can't see this. Like that's that's clearly in the start in the cards. It's like 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 I don't get it. Like <laughs> the chances are, like the next time they wrestle, like the Bucks will drop it to them, right? Um, and like, or maybe not this time. Or, or I mean, like not this time they wrestle a match. But next time they wrestle each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it's like y'all just don't want the young bucks to be champions that bad huh all right get worked um <laughs> but uh the greatest tag team of all time does it again the young bucks just just another wednesday for for, for these guys um can't say enough about them so but like crazy insane spots all throughout this shit motherfuckers yeah. going through tables like yeah. it was insane go watch it yeah um, too much, too much great stuff to recount or recap, but yeah, absolutely great match. Um, one of the better, one of the better matches of the year. Um, I'm with you, uh, four and three quarters, a fringe match of the year contender. It's a great match. Um, and the crazy part is like, this is like, this is one of their three best matches. I don't know which one's the best out of the three they've had. And like, it's going to be really funny because it's like, FTR has all those title belts or whatever else. And, um, like they're gonna be building towards this eventually, but like who knows when it's gonna be? But like in the meantime, between time, there's gonna be title defenses from the Young Bucks, and they're gonna be great. And then when it's time to actually put them over, like let's say they put them over at full gear, man, uh-huh. they put them over full gear, and like Dax is gonna be pretty much gonna have more singles matches than great tag matches in the year. And you go look back and be like, all right, well who was tag team of the year? The fucking Young Bucks, not <laughs> <FDR. laughs> Like. Like if you want to throw Dax's resume up there, yeah, yeah, like that's all. That's mostly singles, baby. Like, no, nah, yeah. what about the tag team stuff? Oh, don't, oh, don't oh. be trying to add that in. Don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't be trying to fool us. Yeah, Ooh. so that that's With gonna be singles. that's gonna be funny. That's gonna be funny. Like, I mean, maybe it's not I'm full gear. Laughing. Maybe I'm, it's not I'm, full gear. I'm but we'll die see. I laughing if the Observer poll comes out and the Young Bucks do it again. I am like, I'm gonna be. They're ahead right now. I'm going to be uncontrollable. On would you disagree? Line. Would you disagree? I think they're ahead right now. I think your everyday fan would still have FTR ahead. I disagree at this point, but um, I feel like FTR just has all the the momentum right now and the fan support. I think the Bucks are just kind of like kind of coasting still, but like they're they're rapidly waking up. Their I, four I best matches are better than FTR's four best matches. This year, I don't. So far. I don't. I, I think people are going to remember that beginning of the year. 
All I'm saying is FTR okay. better better start getting on the board because I mean, the young bucks can can look the young bucks can have a third quarter like Stephen Clay and open this shit up right <laughs> and and the, the thing for me is like some of the belts that they have that they're going to defend like uh, all right they be, let's say they do become the uh, the heavyweight tag champs in New Japan and I I be heavyweight tag champs who are they facing to have great matches with because they don't care about tag wrestling in, in that way the AEW does. No one yeah. does, except for like stardom. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I, you know, yeah. well, by ta- well, by tags, I mean like I was, I was including with stardom. I meant like the trio. So, well, never mind that. So, just really AEW only about two v two tags in wrestling like that. So, like, yeah, they're gonna have they're gonna have some really good defenses in Japan if they if they have them if they end up with those belts and all that kind of stuff. But like, compared to Compared to like that that you know nine tw- or that eight twenty match for uh in in dynamite, I don't know, man. Yeah, and there's a lot of teams that are around. Um, a lot of wrestlers in AW that that are there. Um, I, I think there's a Swerve and Lee match um, in the Young Bucks future that could probably. How you think that's gonna go? Yeah, I think that's gonna be fa fa fa. Yeah, like that's that's rhetorical. I mean, yeah, like how do you think that one's gonna go? Yeah, oh, four uh, and a half easy. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> I'll probably serve to you know further swerve and Lee whatever they got going on. But like, there's just lots of opportunities for the Bucks to get their open shots. Like, it's amazing the way these boys like kind of coasted through like their first quarter of the year, not really wrestling, not on the show. Rest yeah. and recuperate. And, All right, and bro, it's time and to just, drop and, 50. And, right, and then think about like what happens when Kenny Omega <laughs> comes back and you start getting like the the trios matches of like undisputed elite, uh, undisputed uh, elite versus elite. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that shit's gonna be insane for uh, for tag team of the year uh, that they, they don't have their back sleeve. Like FTR ain't got that, their back sleeve. They look. They was out there trying to or not back sleeve. They was trying to attach themselves to CM Punk like they tried to attach themselves to Randy Orton when they were in WWE, but like CM Punk went down and now they up they up the creek. Yeah. I mean, they can reach out to Wardlow, maybe. It'd be a nice spot to see them in, you know, like they're they're all free of the pinnacle stuff and like they're on their own minus MJF. That gives them a place that gives them a place for like they got quality matches around Warlow while they're trying to figure out what to do with Warlow in the meantime, between time, and then you can throw that's another quality team for the trio saying that like CM Punk probably would have been in, but now he's not there. You can just do that instead. I think it's a nice. I think it's a nice trade off. And keeps him, you know, once the trios thing starts popping off. But Hangman's out there. Maybe they can squash their uh, whatever the fuck happened with them. But I, I wouldn't if I was like Hangman's hey, uh, looking like he he's trying to find Kenny Omega. They feel like there's another elite chapter opening right now. So I don't know mm. what's going on, but mm. but the wagons are circling. So. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, but that's all I got on AEW. No, no dynamite or rampage stuff. I did not see rampage. I fell asleep before the uh, show. Uh, shit. Um, I I didn't remember what even happened. And by the looks of things, nobody watched rampage this past week. What, what, what was the rating? <laughs> Three thirteen, and then Ooh. like point one zero. Oh man. Um. I think so. I think it was Mox and Dante Martin. Yes, that match Jade was Jade and Willow. Yes, Jade and Willow was like one of the best uh, Jade matches so far. Willow was over like Rover, like over to where it's like, hey, you need to stop fucking around. I mean, it's the second time we've seen her out in like, obviously, the first time was in that Boston area. So it's like home area. Of course, you're getting cheered. And then you're in St. Louis. It's like, Oh, they sharing her in St. Louis. They sharing her in St. Louis. Sign this woman immediately. They love this woman. <laughs> I, I feel like I've heard whispers that she's earmarked for uh, ROH. Okay, if she, I mean if she she already was doing Ring of Honor. I I think they're selling her short. Like if their ideas they're going to make her the woman's champion or the wo- woman of honor champion, fine. But like she needs to be like getting um kind of like the same treatment Jay Lethal's getting uh. Or whatever, or Joe is getting as a ch- channel of the champion. Where it's like, yes, you're technically Ring of Honor, but because I own two companies, like we're going to feature you here and there whenever we get the chance. Because uh, like she, whatever she has, it, the crowds eating it up. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to trans transition out of this and move on, but uh, I don't know what was that, what else was on the card. Uh, but was there was there 
Osprey match? Darby and Bobby Fish. Oh, Darby and Bobby Fish. Hey, man. Now I see you. Now I know why you didn't watch this. It's, it, it reminded me a lot of when you talked about how uh, Bobby Fish, I'm sorry, uh, Dominique Foxworth and Bomani uh, ducked out of doing Foxworth Fridays to talk about the, the Warriors win. I feel like you ducked out of watching Rampage to not see Bobby Fish go out here and drop 40 with Darby Allen. Yes, bro. I was watching this match and I was like, this man is doing RLPW. Love him, damn it. <laughs> Guess I won't see it. Shame. You petty bitch. Bro, Shame. Darby, Darby and Fish are so goddamn good, bro. Oh my god. Look, man. Don't don't shock me. Darby. Bro, Darby was out here bumping uh and pinwheeling off of this man, and Fish was out there just Taking horrendous bumps uh, into the into the uh, barricades off of that stuff, uh, looked like he had snapped or whiplashed his neck against the barricade at one point. Um, it just did set the show to man's... record. Sorry, it did set the show to record, so I intended on watching it. But Watch it, then, bro. you yeah. like this match? I understand you got your, your gimmick or whatever else. You would like this match a lot. Um, so, so then from there, it's just them going back and forth. And before this. Uh, cause it was, a, I think it was, a. uh, Oh fuck. We forgot to talk about Christian. We'll get to that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We'll get back to that. Uh, but basically before the match, because of Kyle O'Reilly taking out sting and breaking his leg by pilmonizing his leg, Darby's like, bro, I promise you, I'm going to get a hold of you. When I get a hold of you, uh, uh, or are you saying this to O'Reilly's like, look, man, I promise you, like, what you did to Sting, I'm going to do to Bobby Fish. I'm going to break Bobby Fish's leg for the end, for the end of the night. His leg will be broken. I promise you this. Keep in mind, he's a baby face. He made a promise. Keep in mind. So they go through this match, and Darby ended up winning at the end. And then uh, O'Reilly came out with a white chair. I don't know why, but but uh, came down to the ramp with it. Came down the ramp with it. Lights go black. Sting shows up. He goes to swing it at Sting. Sting just throws, basically throws the bat into, <laughs> into, into O'Reilly's nuts. And then they proceed to beat the shadow fish and beat the shadow O'Reilly, leaving both in the ring. And then Sting, he pilmonizes, uh, he pilmonizes the leg. Um, and like he said, he, baby fame made a promise and the promise was kept. Uh, but yeah, the match was great. Um, probably I just give it four flat stars. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I guess we go go back. Christian after losing the uh, after Jurassic Express loses the AEW World Tag Titles in front in St. Louis in front with uh, Jungle Boy's family sitting on ringside. He turns on them uh, and lays him out because you know at the end of the match, um, Jungle or uh, Luchasaurus. Goes through off the table, and basically the same thing that happened with Nick Jackson um, at the latter match of two death. Sets of tables. Yeah, uh, where but basically like the same spot where it's like sets of tables on the floor. We tip the ladder, you crash over the ropes. Uh, but it was very similar to what happened with Nick Jackson at the uh, 2019 ladder match between the uh, Lucha Bros and Young Bucks, where like he wasn't high enough or the ladder wasn't close enough to the edge. And, like, he realizes as he's going down, he's not close enough. So, they have to, like, uh, jump off the ladder while the ladder's already teetering at, like, a past 45-degree angle to get over the clear ropes. Like, mm-hmm. Nick Jackson, he he realized it a little too late, and he got clipped on the rope, so it made his landing even rough. Luchasaurus was lucky enough and fortunate enough to realize it a little bit earlier and just barely clear the, the ropes off the, <laughs> off the jump but without getting clipped and not having to make, you know... With his size, you know, through them late tables where he's going to, you know, just break through them like sheets of paper and like no really bad bump happened or worse bump than, you know, than what was going to happen. So that happened. He's off the table for that match. Uh, Lucia, or not Lucia Bros. Young Bucks win the titles. So Jurassic Express, one guy's healthy. So you have <laughs> Christian. He consoles Jungle Boy, and then he low blows him. And I think he, then he hits the kill switch. You know the the finish, the finish that you only hit on geeks. Um, and then went dark. And then after the show went dark, they showed that Chris or Christian apparently, you know, got in uh, Jungle Boy's family's face and you know called him a piece of shit and all sorts of things, or said that you've raised a piece of shit or something like that. Um, so that's where they're headed: Jungle Boy and Christian. Not bad. Yeah, um, a lot of people are happy this this turn 
went down. Um, I was been saying Christian looks untrustworthy for about six months now. So, uh, (laughs) you know, on on almost a week prior, you know, Edge gets turned on by his group. Christian was like, fuck that. I'm I'm doing the the turning. turning. I'm doing the turning. And, um, He beat the shit out of this man. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do the match and let Christian win or not, but it feels like somebody's been hearing One Nation Radio and hearing about you know them needing heels uh, that can work kind of near the top of the card. Uh, I could easily see a Moxley and Christian match. We know they love each other. Um, <laughs> and that's like one of Moxley's homeboys. If Moxley gets the uh, interim belt, I could easily see a Christian title match this summer. Uh, but I could also obviously see him putting over Jungle Boy at, at the end of whatever they're doing. Um, and I feel like the you know, he's been laying it out, and whenever he does cut the promo, it's going to be like a summary of what everything felt like he was saying. Uh, when those times where Jungle Boy would like look at him like, What the fuck you mean? Like, and, and then all these challenges that he kept signing them up for, it's like he was trying to teach him how to, you know, have that killer instinct that you know to be a champion and all this other stuff. And then he's going to hit Christian with that, but you was never, no, well, why wasn't you none of this shit? And it's going to be, you know. It's going to be on from there. Like, and uh, Jungle Boy came out in kind of like different looking gear uh, in in this match. And I think actually Caleb had a great idea. And I don't often give Caleb gr- uh, credit for any great ideas. Because, I must you know, hear what this such is. Such a seldom thing. But, I must hear what this is. So he said, you know, like basically it's a fine, it's a way to like christen him as Jack Perry at this point. Like, you say, yo, like, you know, when I face you, you're not going to be facing Jungle Boy. You're going to be facing Jack Perry, like, you know, like a man, like, you know, shit like that. Like, I like I, I kind of dig it, you know, if, if they were to go that route with it. So, um, but, yeah, I it, turn was it, extremely well done, violent. And then, like, the little bit of, like, selling out to the family, add that in. That is mm-hmm. that, that's the touch that you want. And, uh Christian's a you know excellent heel and he'll get a chance to like talk and I I enjoyed the veteran babyface Christian that was around for and I've never I'm, I'm, I'm well on record I was never really an enjoyer of Christian like that until like I, you know I, him I coming think it in. was I think it was made sweeter for you to, to to get into it as like on the other end there's Edge and WWE and he's like it's like floundering. Yeah, I, th- I think that's. I think those made it easier for you to to appreciate uh, what Christian can do. And obviously, he's been better than Edge. But you get my point. It's just like this is a dude that you know. I think once you have the stakes or whatever else in the right, uh, or you have the priority right, in instead of treating like Edge like he is, you know, <laughs> like the long lost missing piece. Uh, if you if you just brought in Edge at an appropriate thing where he's back, aren't you guys happy? And instead of like immediately he wants to rumble and all that other shit, then like you could have enjoyed it more as opposed to like what they did we with, with Edge, where it's like Edge comes in, he get he's like this is a respected veteran, he's really good, and then like they give him a run, and then like they go from there with setting a the course of putting him with um, Jurassic Express. Like they they had a plan as opposed to like we're gonna push this dude to the moon even though like there's no reason for the fans to buy that he's you know that level of the guy because even when he was here he wasn't the guy in that that level no one that remembers him and that is fond of him thinks of him in that way yeah <clears throat> yeah man but that's it for AEW not this time <laughs> yeah um oh man. Totally forgot it. I don't know how we could possibly forget it. Um, slipped our minds. You almost got y'all, Aubrey. You almost, <laughs> you almost, you almost escaped the wrath. You almost, you almost made it out. But no, at the last second, I remember Drake dropped an a album that came out on like a notice of like six hours. Uh, <laughs> I tried to sneak this and, in, and you know it. You know, basically like. Right before the NBA Finals game, he announces he's, he's a new release coming out album called uh, what was it called again? Never Honestly, mind. never mind. Honestly, comma never mind. And it came out, and me as a music listener, I have long passed my time where like I care about a Drake release in a way where it's like it comes out, I must hear what what happens or what what it sounds like in you know midnight or the next day or whatever else 
me personally, when it comes to new releases, I'm either I get I listen to it the day of uh, in the morning or I'll wait a week once I can get some of the stuff that people have put on my timeline out of my mind. Right. And uh, this one I had to hear about an hour or maybe like a half hour before we uh, uh, I finished about a half hour before we did start the show um, or maybe an hour. And for me, it was like. So many people that I saw in my timeline were like, either were confused by this because they didn't know what it was, or they heard it and they were like, they weren't expecting this from Drake, or they th- flat out thought that it was an awful record. Um, record, you know, uh, say it almost ironically at this point. Um, the playlist was, they were, they were not happy with the playlist. And I was like, and then I heard people talk about, you know, uh, people talk about house music or dance music and talk about, uh, the uh, black people not fucking with house music, even though they created house, and it's turned into some talk about like the rock, like the the chicken and the egg when it came. When people talk about rock music, and it's like, hey man, I understand that we, I understand the. the you Why know, are y'all t- bending over this hard to defend this man? Yeah, that, yeah. like they were yeah. going, they were walking up and down the hill, yeah. fifteen miles yeah. barefoot backwards uh, yeah. to defend this man at any uh, you know measure possible to defend that garbage that he put out. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, and I, and I got it to, I got it from, and so from not, I'm watching and hearing all this and reading it while not hearing the record. So the record, I'm saying again, so or the playlist. So I'm like, okay. I want to hear what this sounds like because, you know, me and you, we used to, once upon our time in our younger days, uh, we used to frequent uh, such such establishments that will play house music or whatever. So, like, there is not, like, a situation where we have a bias against house music or, yeah, tell you, or even and, electro. And, look, and, and James, I'll say... I not only enjoy the house music that we used to hear, which is the progressive house, I went and did my own house music journey that I've been hearing my whole life from my mom who played house when I was right. a kid. And, you know, all different kinds of house, deep house, Chicago house, uh, whatever, sunset house, you know, all the right. different types of house. Like, I love right. it all pretty much. Right. Yeah, like anything from, yeah, pretty much anything from Swedish House Mafia to Timberland to CNC Factory to Madonna in between. Like, we've heard, we've heard a lot, we've heard a lot more than, you Dr. Know, Fingers. Or, or, yeah, like, I think, I think. <laughs> Marshall Jefferson. <laughs> so. Deep inside. <laughs> so. Barbara uh, Tucker, you know. Yeah, so uh, I heard this record. And I, my immediate thought was, I can see why a lot of people um, did not, that a lot of people that, like, I I would, I guess, care for what they think of certain music, why they did not care for this particular record, just off of, just off of just the general principle, right? Just off GP. Uh, but then there's also the part where it's like, even for what this record is going for, regardless of if I think it actually cohesively makes sense together, all the pieces, I don't think this record is actually good. This record is not good. Regardless of the, the genre and it being a black artist or it being a rap artist doing the genre, these records in in, to, in total and even together, even though I think them together make a lot more uh, make a lot of sense being put together like this is a cohesive sound the problem is the sound is boring as hell it's all just like one long song it sounds like and it's <laughs> and, all depressing like so, <laughs> so for me like this fits in line with what i've always thought of drake as a singer right like i've always i've long have always said like he's so much better of a rapper than a singer and while I do like certain songs of his that that are singing first or just only singer or singer at the for singing at the forefront, he is at times leaning into this bad tendency of like doing it almost for the sake of doing it or doing it in spite of the part where like he does not recognize what his best skill is. And him making this record is like here see or imagining and then also later confirming and seeing people make a comparison of this is 808 and heartbreak is like stop right there i, I know there's my new thing where i do the Stephen a smith stop right there but like you have been caught right-handed i get what you're trying to say because this is a breakup album and he sounds miserable or whatever else the problem is kanye started off the first half of, of 808 and heartbreak with 
Uh, Say You Will, Welcome to Heartbreak, Amazing. I'm doing this off my head, top of my head, so I might have one or two things wrong, a little bit wrong, but uh, Amazing, uh, Heartless, like Love Lockdown and Robocop, or, or not Robocop, but Paranoid. That is like the first third of the album. There is not, aside from maybe Love Light Down, there is not a single record on here that I am putting up against the begin- that first, like, half or first th- two-thirds of Anyways Heartbreak. Not having it. Not, no, it's getting no buys over here. Right? And, like, there's also this part where it's like, when I first heard Anyways Heartbreak, I liked that record, and then listening to it more over time, it grew on me more from there. Like, uh, like I'm sure you've had this where you go through an album, and like you listen to it once or twice, and then like you kind of like more or less like pick the ones songs you like, and then like you kind of discard the rest, and then like over time mm-hmm. for some whatever reason like you pick up another song later, and then like it adds to your enjoyment because you like you this song hits for you in a way that it didn't when you first heard, initially heard it. Like Welcome to Heartbreak did not did not grab me at the beginning. At the beginning, that might be my favorite song off of 808s now. Like so when I hear this, and I'm going to give it more runs, I'm going to be be more fair. Like it's almost like. It's almost in a way like he decided like, hey, you know, a lot of people like that Grease record I made a couple years ago during the pandemic. I'm going I'm to bring that out and whatever else. But the problem is like none of these songs are as good as Grease. <laughs> and what, and that seems to be song? the problem is like, huh? What song? Uh, Grease. Uh, basically where he's out here sounding like The Weeknd. For, oh, for okay. The record where he said like from 2020 where he basically sounds like reading. Like basically he had two singles back to back. I think in the summer 2020 where like, uh, it was pop star in in um. Oh yeah, yeah, Greece. yeah. That that, that Grease song was. Uh, yeah, I I didn't like that either. But Grease is a better song than these songs on the record that I've heard. Uh, and like for me, when you start off a record and you're Drake, and like the first three songs are like songs that's like I I don't know if I'd ever I don't I think it'd be okay never hearing this again. And it takes to like track four to where I was like, okay, finally something I'll play again ever. It's wild, and then you know, like bro, uh, his last two albums have been like this. I feel like mm. I, there was only one song on Cob that was like I feel like I could throw on his all time highlight reel, and mm. then like you get this thing, and I, I, I just hear this, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, like I, I think, it, I think personally, I'd have to go back and give him more runs, but off the top of my head, uh, or not off the top of my head, I'm looking at a list that I, of stuff that I wrote down, like going track by track while I'm listening to it, like falling back. Like I'm going, I'm, I'm basically going down. Let's give my synopsis of all these records of all these. Tr- keep saying records. Like falling back the intro, I was like, fine, comma, useless refrains, ninety seconds too long. Uh, then uh, text go green. I just typed mid and moved on. Right, like uh, third track. I I like the song. The problem is the doing the best week thing. I was like, what the fuck is this? Please stop sampling this Trillville thing. I, Please let it go. I liked everything except for that. I like everything except for that, but it was annoying as shit. Maybe I'll, maybe it'll outgrow, I'll grow into not being annoyed by it. For now, it, it was literally squeak, squeaky, squeaky wheels. It was annoying shit out of me. Uh, a keeper. I was like, finally something I'd play again. Then uh, calling my name. I was like, why the fuck was this just an interlude? Like the part where he's like, uh, you know. I think it was like bring that pussy here, whatever the sample was, and I was like, this is okay. We're going somewhere, and then like it turned out to be like some really short interlude, and so instead of a song, was like, bro, if you don't put vocals on this, to give me something that I actually care about, whatever. Uh, then uh, he did the sticky song that basically like it's he's rap singing on it, and it's like he's rap singing like the the cadence that he would do on like rapping on like some take Heath stuff, like the look mm-hmm. live shit. But, like, the drum pattern is, like, this weird pattern that, like, you're, is unenjoyable for the fact that he's rapping on it like it's a trap record. And I'm like, hey, man, just call Take Heath. Just go get, just go get another Take Heath pack and just do and remix this or fix this. Because this was a mistake by, by putting those verses on this song. Uh, then Massive, I was like, okay. I, I know where this is going, and then sure enough, they brought up that night that 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 Roland TR 909 uh, open hi hat. I was like, okay, we are, and then the piano drop. I was like, okay, dude, we we out here literally voguing on these niggas on some on some mm-hmm. 
on some nineties shit. Okay, early nineties shit. Okay, this is some this is some Madonna CNC factory shit. This this one works. This one works. This all this this type of record and beat is always gonna work. It, it's it's timeless. It's it's a timeless record. Um, then uh, massive or not? All right, I just mentioned massive. Then uh, flights booked. I was like, I'm, good song. Overdrive, good song. The problem is I have no I have no idea how to place it. You know how like you hear songs, you can imagine like where we play that. Mm-hmm. I don't know where I don't know where uh Overdrive gets played exactly. Um for some strange reason, like, yeah, I'll play it a couple more times. But like I-, I like the song, but I just don't know where like I don't know where you play it. Like when I first heard like the first going through the first half of the record, like when people talked about like where these records be played, like these would be played at like a lounge or whatever else, I can see all that. This song in particular, I couldn't. Like, or people were talking about, like, it could be played like a, like a H, H and like a, like a, um, like a retail store or whatever else. I can see that. This one, I had a hard time placing. Like, I don't know if it's because of the, uh, what they did at the beginning and they opened a song with the, with the kick where they basically put on a, a low pass filter. So all you hear is the highs of the kick. I don't know, but it didn't, it didn't, it couldn't place it. Uh, maybe I'll give a couple more runs. Uh, maybe I don't know where to place it, but like, it, that was, a, oh, that was one part about me, about that bothered me about it. Is I can't know where to place it, but uh, it's a good song. Um, then, then he has a song called Downhill, and I was like, it drifted out of my attention, I couldn't, I couldn't, I started thinking about other things, uh, or whatever else, I started thinking about the show that we're doing right now, and I was like, I was like, Could huh. you say it, your attention span went downhill? Right, and that's that what I wrote in the notes, I was like, drift out of my attention, appropriately named. Uh, then I, I said, uh, t- tie that binds, I was like, fine, liability, I was like, this is a screwed up, leaned out remix of the previous beat that I just described is fine. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome idea. This was fine. I'll remix it. it uh, and I was like, one of, one of the verses, one of the verses, his man said, talk about a woman mistreating him. He's like, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, you playing Scrabble on me? I was like, bro, what? Completely uninspiring. Yeah. Uh, then, then you have uh, the, the outro. Uh, the Jimmy Cooks with two to one Sabbath. I was like, this trolling. Up. I was like this. This up. I was like, either this is an excellent trouble job or a signal that he just needed to get this collection of sad music off right now. And this indicates that he's back to business as usual going forward. I don't know, but it seemed like, all right, I did all this. I got off my chest. I'm gonna give. I'll let y'all know. Like this was what we're, we're going forward back to the regularly scheduled programming. So we'll see. He he got to leave the uns uns music alone. <laughs> um, it's not for him. Um, or at least this shit wasn't because I this, immediately this, I heard yeah. people jumping up with passion fruit. I was like, passion fruit washes no. everything on this album right. uh, back and front. Um, yep. I thought this was uh, one dance this, controller. All bro. that stuff washes this stuff. Uh, like I feel like Drake's singing is his left hand in basketball, but <laughs> instead he thinks he needs to shoot jump shots with the left hand. He's it's built, like no he's nigga. Singing. No, nigga, stick to finishing with the left hand. So leave, leave. You don't have to shoot three pointers only with the left hand. You don't have to back people down with the left hand. You don't have to shoot mid range with the left hand. No, stop with the singing, bro. Like it's, it's just not that interesting. It's not that good. It's just sad. It's just the same tones. It's just the same subject matter. It's just the same same shit of like the weakest shit he does. And I heard this shit, and it the way they they were they was talking. He drops it on Kendrick Lamar's birthday, trying trying to do some funny shit or whatever. Um, you look at the cover, you think this man about to come out here on, you know, it's about to be some some fire. And then this, this about to be some like three six or Texas shit, yeah, yeah. And then this man come out here and drops this this boom fuckery uh, off, and it's like, nigga, what was this? Like, go try again. Try again, motorcycle. Uh, I would suggest he doesn't try this again for, for public instruction. <laughs> I, no. Make that music, leave it in your headphones. You no, know, it, like, make that music, pl- give it to people that are going to, that are going to give you some honest feedback, and then get, and then go back to taking this constructive criticism and then, like, re, re, you know, rejigger some of the things. Like, like what made you go with that line, Drake? Yeah, like, I, it's just, um, I get the gist of the album is a sad breakup album for summertime for summertime depression, which is like great. Right as right as right as the summer, right as the the weather's getting good and we going outside, we are gonna talk about heartbreak. Awesome, awesome. But uh, but yeah, like you know whatever. Like 
there's a lot of sad records that I that I still bump and play all the goddamn time. Like I play Adele, I play uh, Sam Smith, I play Mary J. Blige. Like so, so like the sad thing is in the is the hang up where I don't like this album. Don't so I, I so if anyone's thinking that like no no I, I, I like I like sad things. Also like some things that are also also like the thing that's about Drake is like he he's always made or he's always had a I don't want to say a propensity like but he's always had in his catalog some things that I just found to be well done boring music boring music and like that's not the and i don't say boring is a pejorative even though a lot of people will take it that way like adele makes boring music just off the strip lana del rey makes boring music just off the strip like there's no excitement or thing there there's nothing to make you amp up like it's not like i'm playing uh it's not like i'm playing i'm gonna say it again or like i said earlier today it's not like i'm playing uh mop and buster rhymes any up it doesn't it doesn't hit you that way in your chest it just doesn't we, we can't we can't pretend otherwise but that, that doesn't mean that the records aren't good it just is it's not i don't know i don't know necessarily where to place it or i don't know what speed i will ever find it to play it in front of people that doesn't mean the record doesn't mean that the music isn't good or any of that stuff it's just it's just boring and it's fine um drake has done that a lot in his records and that's why when people talk about you know um some of his records being so good or you know like uh take care as a classic i'm just like nah man i'm not putting enough with marvin's room in the, in the classic category Maybe that's harsh, but like the stuff that's good on that on those records are not those are the things that people like love in that way. And it's like, nah, man, like there are records that hit that emotional note that are actually good or fun or or not fun, but are good or have something in the way of movement or melody or or something memorable. Besides, I just feeling like you're in kind of floating in in uh, in stasis. So. Yeah, uh, so for me, like, when you mentioned, like, the, the rap thing as far as, like, it, or the rap and the singing thing, and, like, he always likes to dribble his left hand, like, I said this at the end of my uh, my thing when I was sending it to y'all, I was like, Drake has always been a far superior rapper to singer, and this last song was the latest example um, and reminder of that, talking about, you know, Jimmy Cooks, and I was like, he ain't Chris Brown, he ain't Trey Songs, he ain't Tank, he ain't Tyrese, he ain't Usher, like, and I, by saying that, I was like, he's not that level of vocalist. And then, like, when you talk about, like, the emotional vulnerability or whatever else, I'm like, he ain't her, he ain't Kaylani, he ain't Jasmine Sullivan, he ain't Rihanna. And, uh, and then, like, we talk about, like, the star level of, like, his shows or, or what he is as an entertainer. I was like, because he's a singer, because he's, like, like fans himself to be a singer. Like, he ain't Beyonce, he ain't Bruno Mars, and he ain't The Weeknd. What he is is someone who should have healed himself away from the studio instead of putting out this summertime sadness. And I gave the shit out of five stars, two and, and a quarter. And like, and <laughs> like, and let the people know, like, I gave it two and a quarter in the music rating uh, category, not in the pro wrestling rating where like averages is uh two. Uh, sorry, it's two and a half. I'm sorry, we're I'm sorry. In wrestling, two stars is average match. Like, and when you when you Historically, I look. I look at people doing ratings for for music. Two and a half is the average. So I'm really saying, like, in, in a wrestling rating, like this is like a one and three quarters uh, album. So like, yeah, Get we're fuck. Like, like, yeah, like, why did he even turn his fucking mic on? Like, <laughs> one of those. Like this was um, this was this was not a good album. Yeah, man. Um... And I don't know why I keep setting myself up to look for Drake to have this just great album. Because he's so talented, you figure he'll put it all together eventually. Eventually, and he never does. Nope. And that is the reason why I uh, tuned out on him uh, after, um, if you're reading this, it's too late. That's the closest he got. Like, that's my favorite Drake album. uh, I would say, I think it's probably my second or third. Um, cause you know, I, I like some of the, that was his rapping his rap album uh, at, up to that point. And I like, I do like, he does have some good singing records, but that's where we end up in the end of the bad places when he overindulged himself in his singing stuff. So yeah. Uh, yeah, man, he, he, he tried it and like, gotta say like people want to say, look, this he, knew, look he knew better than to promote that music ahead of time. He mm. knew better. He he knew better mm. to, to try to pull a fast one on us, a surprise six hour release and all this stuff. And this man came out and done some interviews. Ah, oh, Drake doing interviews. LOL. Um, or you know, saying, "Hey, this is like what direction we're going with this." Like, 
I don't, I don't know if he thought people wouldn't fuck with it or whatever, or so he needed to like to to play in this veil of secrecy or whatever. But uh, we heard the music, bro. I, like, I think I think that you know um, we talked about this uh, talking about you talking to you and Kirby about it because I remember you know when 808s came out, like you and Kirby hated that record, and I was saying like, hey man, like I, I understand that you want the rappers to rap, but like I I think there is a space. And I mean, I think I said at the time, it was like, I mean, I grew up on Outkast. Like, I'm okay with, you know, people stepping outside of what they, of the rap to do other things. And that's fine. Um, as long as it's good. And always Heartbreak is good and was ultimately like one of the most influential records since it came out. Uh, this, I don't, I, I shudder to think that this is going to, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, carry the, carry the day and inspire people uh, going forward and want to make more music like it. Uh, not not the genre, but just like the same the, the same um, like the same like thought process behind it. And everything went to it. Like this this record was not this record ain't ain't the one to to start crafting um, uh, the budget behind. Nah, this was like Lil Wayne dropping Rebirth. That's that's like. <laughs> He's trying to do rock and roll and shit. I mean, I don't think I ever listened to Rebirth, so I can't give you an answer on that one. Because I was like, no is, "Is Lil Wayne doing rock?" And like, no. That said, that is such a that is such a bankrupt con- like creative concept. Bro. Like, no. And, and, and like, just just the levels of defense. Like, I you, you guys think like sometimes like you know people that want to defend Vince McMahon are bad. My God, like they were going to new levels. Was it worse than uh, when? Was it worse than Kingdom Come? I don't remember anyone defending Kingdom Come. Uh, there was some cope even to be had. Like I'll put it this way, it was so bad with uh, with Kingdom Bro, I Come. I hated that fucking album. I mean, I, it was so bad that I had people that like that were like they asked me if I were, if I was okay. <laughs> when, when, when Jay Z caught that brick, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, man, it's a bad album. It happens, whatever." Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I there were there were but there were people who were, you know. Uh, I think there were people at the time. Obviously, it's a little different because uh, we weren't. There was a Twitter at the time, or people weren't using Twitter at the time. But like, there were people that were trying to be like, you know, Hove ain't catch no brick. Cause Hove can't catch a brick because I've, I've typed my identity to, to Hove, and it's like, nah, man. Like Jay Z might be my favorite rapper or one of my three favorite rappers of all the time, but that shit stinks. That shit stinks. Period. Like, uh, no, uh, what, uh, what fucking album was it that you bought me as a gag? That Ti album that you bought me as a gag? Uh, the fuck? Ti versus or uh, no, not, not, Ti No Mercy. That's right. It was No Mercy. It was like asshole. But yeah, like that same thing is like if it's a brick, it's a brick. I ain't gonna lie about it. Like the catalog is strong enough to work to survive a brick. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Drake been on a streak of like, uh, and then mm, like if we take it back to views, right? I think so like, was suck. he like was he like one for five? He's like two for one. Five? He's like one and a half. Like, like okay, so view, views was the one where he's where he's basically like sounds like he's angry at a bunch of women, right? That's all of them. Um, <laughs> uh, no, 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 not 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 heartbroken, but like angry, like like I, I, uh, I whatever. Uh, I, Scorpion, Scorpion, this one fire. Uh, this two throw it in the river. Okay. Uh, or aside from four songs, throw it in the river. Okay. Um, uh, more life. I'm I'm a fan of more life. Like half of it. Okay. Um, the uh, CLB throw it in the river. Okay. This throw it in the river. All like, right. And, and it's been a bad streak. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> and I think I like Scorpion more than most people. Like the first disc. Mm. All right. Uh, so I, I don't know how much more time we added on this by going through the Drake thing, but, uh, I'm glad we did this. I think we've added like, yeah, I think we just got like to 20, the average 20 minutes off of it, off the album. Yeah. So we added to y'all. We gave y'all a little bit more. Obviously we plan to give y'all this. We didn't give y'all more. We, we almost, we almost said uh, screwed y'all, but we gave y'all this one. So, uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm going don't... to edit this up. And I'm going to put this in front of the uh, the outro, so I don't have to do the outro again. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, Rich. Um, PWI reported a WWE letter to talent saying John Laurinaitis is now on administrative leave. Bruce Prichard is now the head of talent relations, and also in addition to everything else he's already been doing, more power for for old Bruce. 
fly and scam his way to the top and yeah. learn how this takes the fall. I mean, I, I mean, I he would, had to go. I would say, but, yeah, yeah. I would say his he took the fall, the brunt of it. Like he did that shit, right? So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I I see what you what you made, but uh, yeah, he uh, wow. Wow. Um. Yeah. But uh. You know. I'm. I'm just gonna end this here and then move on. So. Uh, Yo. Fuck let- Dave Meltzer on a podcast for several years, and maybe you too can become the head of talent relations in WWE and right hand man in Vince McMahon. Yeah. Um. You know. Given the suggestions he's given to uh, NXT, it seems like you know him being in charge of all this stuff is gonna be. It's gonna be a seamless transition into you know. Uh, the future of of WWE, which is like fire cell. So yeah, um, fun times. Yeah, like obviously, he, we would we would like to believe that their creative uh, would turn around in at the times when it comes to them trying to sell and like lead that that would help the bottom line, but it doesn't. Like this thing is going to sell for like six seven billion dollars one day. And like it's gonna be the shits, and then once they like, once they, get, once whoever buys it acquires it, and they clean house, and they and they fix like, and they get rid of all the carnies, like WWE is gonna be good again. <laughs> and it's I'm just gonna be like, I, I don't know why people are tricking themselves into hilarious. thinking this. What? It's and to WWE be... ever being good again? Yeah. Oh, I I mean I think I think all it takes is one person being out out of the building uh, to change all this shit. Because one person is fucking up everything. I don't know about that. All right, what power does what power would Bruce Pritchard or uh, I don't know who else would be in charge? Who else would be in charge? Would Bruce be Pritchard right now at this point? Pritchard, Nick Khan, Jeff Jarrett. I'm, uh, I'm in as far as creative. I didn't mean the. I didn't mean like back. Uh, like oh, the, the it's money. it's just Bruce Pritchard. It sounds like all right. Like, do you think? Do you think the next person? That hires this, uh, and when they start asking around, is going to keep Bruce Pritchard because I do not. I think he goes. I think Kevin Dunn's gone. I think Pritchard's gone. I think Lauren Ice is already out the door, but he would have been gone too. Like, yeah. like when, once it, once Vince is gone and like they and they get rid of all of uh, it's gonna be double all, J, man. Don't it's gonna be double J. If you say so, I don't think so. But if you say so, I look ultimately look, he could I end up in the creative chair. I think double J ends up on top. So, you know, Here you we'll go. see. I, I quite agree. Like, you know, well, I think that whatever happens, whatever, like all that shit is getting cleared out. People going to want their own people in. And those people are going to be competent on a storytelling level in a way that like this man at seven. Is he 77 now? 76. OK, at 76. Just I mean, he ain't been he ain't been good at this since what? What year you want to say? So let's say he was good at this. Has he ever been good at this? Okay. D- depending on who you ask. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I think, like, once he's up out of there, I don't think it'll be this hard. To, I don't think it'll be this hard. I just don't. We'll see, though. I, You know, like, I, you know, I just think that, uh, that there's just no way that you can just be this bad and, then, like, get someone worse. I, I just find it, I find it to be really hard. Like, I think that, like, the wrestlers will get more of a say and not looking like dumbasses and, and idiots. And I think that'll make people look more like stars and like they'll they'll be able to have their ma- their qual- higher quality matches and all that kind of stuff. I I just think that it'll be this thing. Like we'll see how it goes though. I could definitely be wrong. I want to be wrong on this one. I, if you want to say I'm an idiot and wrong and like naive, or whatever else, I'll, I'll I'll take that. But that's just kind of where I am on it. Um, yeah. So I think it's appropriate just to like leave leave that where it is and like you know um, come Friday we'll give you all a preview show for um. Uh, for uh, for Ben Door, once we have full matchups in the starting pay per view um, on Sunday as well. So um, yeah, uh, I think that's where we'll leave it. Thanks for listening on um, Spaces. Thanks for listening on the Twitch. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Um, at the appropriate places, uh, donations is Juneteenth yes. reparations. Yeah. <laughs> You know, get, you know, give give us some money. People, were, I was I was running into you know people that were wondering how to celebrate Juneteenth. Why not celebrate Juneteenth by paying One Nation Radio? <laughs> it's a good idea than anything else. You know, like you no. Know. The best part is you're not smiling. <laughs> that makes it the best.
Look, ain't nothing to be happy about, you know. <laughs> oh my god. All right, so uh, all right, so on Twitch that would be uh, the that would be the Cash App. Uh, that would be PayPal. Um, on from the podcast perspective, go into the description and drop. <laughs> He's there, dead into the camera, not smiling. <laughs> uh, so uh, from from the perspective of being a podcast listener, that would also be uh, the. Uh, Going to red our red circle in the description and dropping off the donation there. Uh, and also, you know, uh, listen to the other shows on network besides one H radio, besides one H radio, you have keeping it strong style, the Ricky and Clyde wrestling show, grown men watch this shit, the grave consequences podcast, uh, eight bit suplex, all things elite, of uh, uh, great match generator, get in the ring, meet the press slam and AEW match guy. Thanks for listening y'all later. Peace. With Vanguard advice, no matter what your retirement goals are, they can help you get there and enjoy it for years to come. The financial journey is all yours, but you never have to take it alone. That's the value of ownership. Visit Vanguard.com and explore Vanguard advice. All investing is subject to risk. Fund shareholders own the funds that own Vanguard. Services are provided by Vanguard Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Target has laundry day covered because they offer a great selection of concentrated Tide Pods to help with all your laundry needs. Tide Pods clean, freshen, and help rejuvenate your clothes with odor fighters and stain removers. Did you know Tide Pods clean better than the leading liquid bargain detergent? Tide Pods are powerful enough to make your whites white and your brights bright, even in cold water. Just toss in one Tide Pod for small loads, two for medium, three for large. It's that easy. For great value and convenient pickup options, get Tide Pods today at Target.